Hello and welcome to Hollywood Blockbusters. I am your host, Joe Hollywood. And once again, I am joined by Imaginos Pete. Hey, hey. And Andrew Walker. Hello. And I, I saw some uh, interactions going on across the table from me. Uh, Nick, were you trying to cheat off of Andrew's list? That I Andrew hold in my list? hand. <laughs> I was, I was taking, a, I was sneaking a peek at that list of his, and I was going, I wonder where Andrew's mind is right now. And I went, Oh, okay, I, I, I kind of see it, and I kind of see some disagreements, but I enjoy that. Oh no! All right, we're gonna get into that in a yeah. moment. Uh, today's podcast is inspired by the recent release of Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, which is turning out to be quite the box office phenomenon. Yes. Uh, now, here's here's what's interesting about that is I've been told and I have read that this isn't necessarily Deadpool 3. We've had Deadpool 1. We've had Deadpool 2. Apparently, there was talk of a Deadpool 3 that as of right now have, have been tabled so Deadpool and Wolverine supposedly is a standalone movie. Now, I've heard that, you know, uh, Ryan Reynolds says that there may not ever be a Deadpool 3, even though I'd be surprised because this movie's making a ton of money. Um, but it's not necessarily the third movie of a trilogy, even though a lot of people who've seen Deadpool and Wolverine are saying that if this was a trilogy, it would be considered one of the greatest trilogies of all time. Um I got to say, I saw it on a Thursday night of opening weekend. Uh, I didn't want it to get spoiled. Uh, I didn't even want to watch a trailer, but when you're sitting in a movie theater for a different movie and the trailer comes on, it's kind of like that scene in Clockwork Orange where your yeah. eyes are pried open and yeah. you're forced to watch it. Mr. And squirting eye, Make it eye drops. <laughs> Make it stop. So I kind of I got muscled into seeing the trailer. But luckily, the trailer didn't ruin too much. I mean, the trailer basically just showed you that Wolverine is in his classic comic book yellow and blue uh, getup. Um, but not too much was ruined in the trailer. So I went into the Thursday night screening, like 1030 at night screening. Uh, clean slate, fresh, not really expecting anything. And there's probably about maybe eight or ten people in the theater with me. And uh, we all laughed together. We all had a good time together. And as the credits rolled, I immediately wanted to see this movie again. I haven't seen it a second time yet, but I plan on it. Thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I laughed. There were surprisingly touching moments throughout the film. Uh, I don't think this spoils anything by saying there are a lot of surprises, a lot of cameos that hopefully you've been isolated from if you haven't seen this movie yet. Um, but I, I came away saying this is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Uh, Nick, do you concur? What was, what was your feeling as the credits rolled? I enjoyed it. I uh, subscribe to that. It is a trilogy mm -hmm. only because uh, no spoilers. They do reference. You see, if it's in the trailers. You see Vanessa. You see his family. Yeah, the characters from the previous. Yeah, the films, previous. Yeah, yeah the previous Except, films. Except uh, T.J. Miller was noticeably absent. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's some things that happens <laughs> when you call in a fake bomb threat on an Amtrak train. <laughs> yeah, there are certain things that'll, that'll get you uh, taken off the list. But uh, I I considered it a trilogy, and I have no problem in calling it that and yes i absolutely think they will make more deadpool movies because money is money and it is a hollywood blockbuster yeah and <laughs> it's the name and now that and again i don't think this is considered a spoiler but now that deadpool and wolverine are part of the mcu might we see a spidey deadpool team up it's all within the realm of possibility Yes, I think I think so. Uh, I want to get Andrew's opinion on this because I think Sony is the last holdout. They have some kind of contract, and people can look into do further details. That as long as they keep doing a movie every X amount of years, yeah. it renews the license to keep using the character. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure behind the scenes there's some mafia style Game of Thrones stuff going on between Disney and Sony where mm -hmm. they're going to get it back completely so they can stop this nonsense. And they'll say, "Look, it's ours." Yeah. Go do something else. Yeah. We have Deadpool. We want Spidey. Yeah, exactly. We're getting the X-Men. We have the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Can't Exciting. stop us. Andrew, what were your thoughts coming out of the theater? I saw it Friday night with two buddies from work um, at Great Lakes in, in a, one of the big, 
the bigger screens. Uh, the the theater was about seventy percent full, so you know, good sized crowd. And like you said, uh, you know, kind of clapped a little bit and laughed with everyone. So it was felt really, like the old nice. days. Yeah, like pre-COVID. Um, <laughs> Before the dark times. It was it was it was fun. It was very fun watching. After I had a couple of days to kind of marinate on it and excuse me and read a couple of reviews and what other people thought, I still like the first two better overall. Interesting. All right. I think the plot was kind of thin, and I thought that it only got greenlit because Hugh Jackman came back. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is fine. I, I, everyone loves Hugh Jackman. I, he's of course great, and the chemistry between those two is great, hilarious. Mm-hmm. You can tell, you know, they're buddies in real life. Um, the CGI was at some points was kind of lifeless. I guess I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean that that's a lot of movies. But um, overall, the, the cameos has yeah. sealed the deal for me. And it's like, definitely this was so fun. It's fan service, you know. Yeah. But I will say that I, I read something earlier that kind of concurs uh, with what you said about um, kind of some criticisms of the uh, of the movie that someone said, uh, oh, you know, this is this is the formula that sh- they should use in all Marvel movies going forward. And the, the response was, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, it the shouldn't. formula is unique to Deadpool, the yes. breaking the fourth wall and all that stuff. We don't want all movies to look like this. No, the, no. The Deadpool you, movies. No, That's no. unique to that character. Yes. There were there are there are some things that I did look at. Uh, Deadpool is unpredictable. That's one of the mainstays of the character. You don't know yep. what he's going to do. But the fact that when they had him, and this shouldn't really be a spoiler, uh, in the beginning when he's applying for a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll I'll leave it at that. He's applying for a job. The way they went about it seemed very unorthodox for that character, whose whole point is giving the middle finger whenever he feels <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it to whoever. Oh, sure. And then yeah. he was applying for this job in such a way that it felt like I was waiting for him to say, oh, okay, I don't really, and fart, you know, do some kind of, something very Deadpool-y. Yeah. And it didn't. And yeah. when it didn't happen, and then they went, they used the, they used the TVA, again, not a spoiler, it's in the trailers. Mm-hmm. And then they used that MacGuffin, well, but they use it to justify him talking to his family. And then it goes back to the thing where I'm like, okay, it, you know, for a movie this big, they they just start making up terms, which you can. When in, in a superhero movie, I'm not going to say I want to debate the physics of this in the reality. <laughs> yeah. They can make up a, a term which makes a character very important, mm-hmm. like without that, this character is a certain type of term, mm-hmm. which is vital to that reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, I'll go with it. Yeah, but for me, I think the strength of the movie was Hugh Jackman. And, yeah. and Ryan Reynolds and their interaction. And you like you said, there were very touching moments. There's a moment where Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, kind of goes off on Deadpool verbally. Mm-hmm. And it, I, it you kind of, everyone, <laughs> including the character, kind of stopped and said, okay, we're going to fight. <laughs> right. But it it landed. That's stung. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the way it landed. And Ryan Reynolds delivered that line in a very Deadpool way, but it still felt, you felt the emotion to it. So, yeah. no, I agree. I, I That's why I enjoyed I enjoyed the movie, but I think I also I agree with Andrew on that. Put to the 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 main plot point to drive the story forward. I was kind of like, oh, okay, whatever, do yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess uh, that didn't bother me as much, only because I was enjoying the film so yeah. much. So uh, I I don't know. It's you know we brought this up on the podcast before that someone once said. You know, the story doesn't necessarily have to make sense as long as you're having a good time. And I had a damn good time watching that movie. So now the big question is, and that's why we're sitting around this table today, is how does Deadpool and Wolverine rank among uh, Marvel movies? And when I say Marvel movies, I'm talking not only MCU, but Sony and Fox uh, there were a lot of lot of jabs, oh. a lot of jokes uh, yes. uh, geared toward Fox, who haven't been a great steward of these Marvel characters. No, there's been some really well done movies, but probably more misses than hits. And the same thing applies to Sony. That there's been some really great Sony Marvel movies and a lot of trash you have to sort through. So what the challenge that we put forth today was compiling a list of the greatest Marvel movies, not necessarily superhero movies. That's podcast for another day. But we're going to talk about 
our favorite Marvel movies uh, within the MCU, Sony, and Fox universes. Uh, so I compiled a top 10 list. Is that pretty much what you guys are yep. coming to the table yes. with? Yep. All right. So I number one on my list. and I, I be... Oh, you're, you're, you're starting off with number one. I'm going to number one. All right. Number one on my list of greatest Marvel movies of all time. I got to go with The Big Bang. I got to go with Ground Zero, the movie that set the tone for the next 10 years in the MCU. Howard the Duck. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, I am talking about Iron Man 2008. John Favreau, who went on to revitalize Star Wars with The Mandalorian oh, yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, that gave us uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jeff Bridges as the villain, uh, Terrence Howard as Rhodey, who pretty much was one and done. And yep. that's got to go. That could be a future podcast on some of the worst career decisions ever made to step away from that he franchise. Was, he was forced out. He was forced out? Yeah. They want, they I wanted, didn't know that. They wanted Don Cheadle. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought he may have just asked for too much nope. money or something. And, and, and I've heard he's hard to work with. Uh, and after he got let go, he was bitching about it all. The oh, time. I and didn't I was know like, that. oh, okay. okay. Uh, maybe <laughs> it, I owe... caused, it caused a, a bit yeah. of a rift between him and Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Wow. Yep. All right. Uh, my apologies to Terrence Howard. <laughs> I thought you stepped away from the franchise. But uh, regardless, uh, that's just rotten luck. Yeah. Uh, also, a cameo uh, by a Peter Billingsley. Did you guys know that? Ralphie from uh, no. Christmas Story makes an appearance in the film. So yeah. when you rewatch it, uh, look for Peter Billingsley. So, no. so, so is uh, Tom Morello, the guitarist of uh, Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> now, he, he's one of the terrorists. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Just, okay. Like that. Because people's like, you know, there are other cameos and they're one of the, they're one of the Deadpools. And I went, well, I can't see them. <laughs> so that's Tom, all. Tom Holland's brother. Well, yeah. right, you know, but that was like when uh, what's his face, um, uh, Daniel Craig said, "I had a cameo in Star Wars." Really, Daniel? <laughs> sure, yes, a stormtrooper. Well, well done, Daniel. <laughs> you know, he's just—I—I uh, uh, I don't know if he like, might have been friends with John Favreau. I don't know, but Peter Billingsley is like a scientist or something in the movie. And cool. I remember as I'm sitting in the theater going, "Is that Ralphie?" <laughs> so yeah, look for Ralphie if uh, you had noticed that before. Now, of course, Iron Man was a monster, monster hit. Uh, earned five hundred eighty-five million dollars on a hundred thirty to hundred forty million dollar budget. Huge uh, gamble. Huge uh, reviews uh, on our RT Sports or RT Sports. Our, our Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, their score, or Iron Man score, is ninety-four percent from critics, ninety-one percent from the audience. Um, so, huge response to Iron Man. Uh, if, if we were to come up with a list of s some of the most perfectly cast characters in movie history, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man was so perfectly cast that, that arrogance, that smugness, uh, oh, he, he just pulled it off. And it was so, also, I think you mentioned this before. It's also serendipitous timing mm -hmm. because at that time, I think Batman Begins was the only Superman movie, I mean, only superhero movie that it kind of stood out. Because Batman had gone into the toilet after what happened with Schumacher, mm -hmm. and it, it this you know oh, Christopher Nolan's doing a superhero movie. Oh, I wanted to take it, but Superman Returns wasn't good. We were coming off the X Men. We were coming off Spider Man Three. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was going on with the Fantastic Four, <laughs> yeah. and then all of a sudden people saying they're doing a, a a Marvel movie. Marvel's doing a movie. You mean they sold it to someone? No, no, no. Marvel's doing a movie. Yeah. Oh. And it's Iron Man. Oh, my God, Iron Man. Yeah. Why not Captain America? Why not someone else? And they say, yeah. well, it's Iron Man, so deal with it. And when that con San Diego Comic-Con trailer, they showed Iron Man flying, John Favre released that, Yeah. the, the hype started. People were oh, like, oh, yeah. my God. I mean, pr like you said, prior to Iron Man, you know, Superman and Batman got all the attention. You know, I mean, going all the way back to the 1966 TV show, um, you know, it was always Superman, it was always Batman, and those are sort of the characters I grew up with. But on Saturday mornings, those there were the really poorly animated uh Marvel characters, you know, Captain America throws his mighty shield. And so I wasn't a big comic book reader as a kid, but I watched those shows, and so I was familiar with Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, and all that stuff, but I I, I didn't devour that stuff, right. you know, rapidly. 
Um, and so when they said they're doing an Iron Man movie, I'm like, well, this should be interesting. I, I was familiar enough with the character. And my God, when I sat in the theater, I'm like, this is the dawning of a new age. And when you think about all the movies to come and all the characters that they could reach in and pull from their, you know, gallery of heroes. And it's like, this is something special. And sure enough, it was. And that's why it's number one on my list, only because we had had superhero movies before that in various degrees of success. But Iron Man set a standard. And probably for me personally, the most important thing that it introduced was like this humor that some of those earlier superhero movies didn't have a lot of humor in it. Um, and uh, it, felt it was forced. funny and it was charming and it was exciting and, and there was conflict and uh, it, was, it just changed everything. Like Jurassic Park, you know, had such a huge impact when it came out. Star Wars, you know, what it did for the film industry. When Iron Man came out, it's like, okay, something is going on here. And it capped it off yeah. perfectly. Yeah. At yeah. the, the very end, that and it gave rise oh, yeah. to a post credit That scene. last line. Because yeah, a lot yeah. of people would leave. In fact, I almost left, and my brother said, you might want to wait. Said, <laughs> mm-hmm. Wait for what? Yeah. And so I sat there, everything rolled, and then came that little scene, when, and then you see Sam Jack come out and say, "Yeah, I want to talk to you about the Avengers initiative. And at that point, oh, my, my mind God. went, wait, what are we, wait, what? What are, what, are you, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah. And like you said, then kicks off this... Yes, yeah, uh, uh, basically a 10-year period. I mean, I know it's still going on, but that 10 years is what's special What to a me. decade. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. So I'm curious, where does Iron Man rank on your list of uh, Marvel movies? In, it doesn't make my Mount Rushmore. It, 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 in my top 10, it'll be number five. That shocks the hell out of me. It would be five. Five on your top 10. It was four, then Deadpool Wolverine came out. <laughs> So someone oh, had to get knocked out man. of there. You sound like the guy who was going to carve Mount Rushmore said, "Ah, Washington's a little overrated. <laughs> let's uh, let's put somebody else." I up mean, there. that I, surprises. I had me. to put him. You know, I had to put him in there because the whole <laughs> war thing and being number one. I was like, "All right, I got to put you on there, but I'll take some wow. flack." And there, are people, right. there are people that didn't make the cut on Rushmore. They're going, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> like Teddy, like Teddy would be pissed off. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, where does Iron Man fall on your list? Number four. Man. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting podcast. There are people listening going, all right, I, I need to hear who you have ranked ahead of Iron Man. So I'm intrigued yes, now. Yes. Wow. Because remember, these also encompass Fox and yeah. Sony movies. Yeah, it's yeah. Not just the I, have a, I have quite, quite a few Fox. Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right, number two on my list. And... Let me preface by saying this, that even though it has a good uh, Rotten Tomatoes score, of all the movies on my list, I believe this movie has the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score, which surprises me. But number two on my list is Captain America, The First Avenger, 2011, uh, directed by Joe Johnston. That's not the reason why it ranks so highly. I'm not related to him at all. Um, Of course, it introduced uh, Chris Evans as Captain America, who previously had been part of, uh, I guess you can say, the Marvel Universe of movies as Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four. So that was an interesting casting choice to bring him in as Captain America. Tommy Lee Jones, who may have been too old at the time to play a military uh, figure, but he was fantastic as always. Uh, Haley Atwell as the love interest. Sebastian Stan, who uh, his role expanded over the years, but he was introduced as Bucky. And then... Hugo Weaving, come on, man, yeah. knocked it out of the park as yeah. Red Skull. You know, prior to that, I'd only really known him from the Matrix movies, um, and he comes in as this villain. And uh, Let's not forget Stanley Tucci for that brief moment. Yeah, yeah. I loved him as Oh, Tucci. yeah, the scientist guy. Yeah. yeah. Now, of all the Marvel movies, uh, not only do I think this one has probably the best origin story about the scrawny little guy becoming Captain America and how he got his identity from being like this, you know, show show guy, like, you know, performing in front of the troops and being mocked and everything. A dancing and monkey, a is costume. that how you see yourself? Yeah, yeah. and so I, I really love the origin story. Um, but it also, dis- despite the cliffhanger ending, it's it's a great standalone movie. It's a World War II movie that's yeah. in its own 
little universe because at the time this uh, movie is set, there is no Avengers. There is no world threat. It's it's just a solo movie um, that sort of replaces Hitler with the Red Skull and introduces, you know, these fantastic uh, weapons, uh, the plasma weapons or whatever you want to call them. Um, and so, in, in my opinion, this is one of the best standalone movies that you could watch and, and not be lost and not go, oh, how does this fit into the larger picture? And then, of course, they do the big cliffhanger at the end and pull them into the modern world. Spoiler alert. Um, but I absolutely love this movie. Um, and again, not only is it the lowest rated movie of these movies on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, it only earned $370 million dollars on a 140 to 216 million dollar budget. So even though it made money, it was not the box office success of the movies that followed, which really surprises the heck out of me. I love the movie so much and it's and it's Captain America. Like I thought people would I mean I wanted to stand up and salute, you know, in the theater and and apparently Audiences didn't feel the same way about this movie that I did. So that's that, one of those movies that gained its popularity as, as time went on. Yeah, I think yeah. people regretted not seeing it in the theater. Yeah. And also because they, I think they were still recovering from, oh, that nice Johnny Storm, Captain America. Can he <laughs> deliver? And he did. He did, mm-hmm. yeah. In a very captivating way. And also, that was also the summer where Captain America came out, or that year, Captain America, then Green Lantern mm-hmm. with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> Thor was coming out. So because this was them building this, up to. Avengers, yep. No. Oh, yeah, that also came out. Yeah, yeah. 2011, yeah. Okay. Another uh, one on the list. So uh, people were wondering, Thor and Captain America, because they're the c- final components, because we got Hulk. Incredible Hulk was out there with Edward Norton in the same year as Iron Man came out. Yeah. And so the, everyone's kind of like waiting on bated breath because, and so I, I think, I, like, I enjoyed it in the theater, and I think people, that movie get, rises in popularity as time goes on. Yeah. And the effects were so phenomenal in that film yeah. that it almost pulled me out of the the experience of, you know, just trying to get lost in the story. When they, the early scenes with the scrawny Steve Rogers, I'm sitting there in the theater going, how the hell did they pull this off? That was very and well done. It was done. almost distracting because it was so well done. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is incredible. So, yeah, the, the effects were groundbreaking, and I love the story. I love everything about it. And that piggybacks on something that Andrew said. If you can do that in 2011, you have no excuse right. for shitty yeah. CGI yeah, yeah. after that. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. All right, so where does Captain America the First Avenger fall on your list, if at all? Four. Four. Ahead of Iron Man. Interesting. Yeah. What reason do you give for ranking it above Iron Man? I, I, I First of all, the, this is a very subjective thing. I have a soft spot for all World War, World War II movies. Me too. And so when they – and it felt very World War II. Like, I don't know what how, how the cinematographer saw, yeah. saw that, but the, whatever the filter they were using, yeah. I was like, yeah, this feels very 1940s. Especially at the beginning when they're in New York City. Yeah. I don't know if they put some sort of sepia – Tone on, on the I'm not I'm not I'm not qualified enough to speak on the terms, but whoever <laughs> whatever they did, it worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked and I, <clears throat> I enjoyed the character. I enjoyed the start, the the score. I the, the when they turn him into the whole American propaganda for the war thing yeah. and I and I see the character take this turn that he wants to be something more mm. and Tommy Lee Jones for the few scenes that he's in there steals it. I'm not gonna have you're you know the all that I got was you. A little expensive lab rat. <laughs> he's still too skinny. Yeah, he's still he's sticking a needle through his arm. It's going to go right through him. He's making me cry. And then also uh, borrowed elements of beloved World War II movies like The Dirty Dozen, yeah. where they put together a ragtag bunch of characters who go in to try to save the day and rescue the POWs. And, yeah, it had a lot of elements of the great yeah. World War II movies. And the score. The score was perfect for that movie. Yeah. When he comes leading them back from the prisoner of war camp and you hear the the Captain America theme come yeah. through and you see the, at the end, you see the kids with the shield yeah. at the end of the world to the captain. Yeah. Kind of thing. It, it, it did a really great job. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Andrew, where does it fall on your list? Number three for me. Ooh. Yes. High. Okay. I, I, I had, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I had more fun watching this in the theater the first time compared to uh, Iron Man. Hmm. Oh, you know what? That's because I didn't see Iron Man in the theater. That Interesting. Might be I saw it. Okay, that's DVD a different experience. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't see that. But uh, 
pretty much just what Nick said. Uh, visually, it's, it's there's something about it just yeah hits every spot for me. Andrew actually knows the terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I thought it was great. Now yeah. the director Joe Johnston, he's directed some of my favorite films, including The Rocketeer, which is yes. an underrated Disney film, and it had a very similar vibe. Yes, yes, it did. Thank it you. Is. That's a great. I mean, they point. could almost exist in the same universe. Yep. It just had a very similar vibe set around the same time period. Yep. So, Dan, yeah. now I wish they can go back and show one of them reading a Rocketeer or something or something about. <laughs> but that yeah. happened a few years before this. That was. You know, when the Hindenburg was still there. But. Yeah. I'm going to go home, pull out my Rocketeer action figure, my Captain America action figure, and <laughs> play on the floor. All right. So that's number two on my list. Number three on my list. Um, gosh, this spot used to be held by a different movie um, until this movie came out. And uh, I absolutely loved it because of the bold choices that it made. And I am talking about Avengers Infinity War, oh. which is the first of the two-part conclusion to that 10-year span. Uh, came out in 2018, uh, directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. Uh, of course, not only did the Avengers return for the film, but then they incorporated Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, all the Black Panther characters, Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. And you think, okay, you know, when you th when you think about a movie like Batman and Robin that brought in Batman and Batgirl and, and Robin and Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy, and it was just and such Bane. a cluttered mess. Yeah. And you're like, okay, it's too much. How the hell did they pull this off <laughs> with all of these movies coming together to give you this masterpiece like The Last Supper? Because you know? it was that was the 17th movie mm -hmm. out of that entire thing, Endgame being the 18th. So they spent 17 movies building, 16 movies building that up. That's yeah. how you can do it. Yeah. Now, the amazing thing about this is this movie earned $2 billion on a $400 million budget. That's a nice ROI, return yeah. on investment. Um, the Rotten Tomatoes score from critics is 85%, which seems a little low, 92% uh, from the audience. Um, but I will never forget that movie theater experience, especially at the ending, the way the audience reacted to the ending. And I'm sitting in the theater in disbelief, like, what is happening here? They got their Empire Strikes Back moment. Yeah. yeah. And then you think, well, the movie's not over yet. You know, there, there's something can still save the day. And then, like, graphic comes up five years later. I'm like, that was a that was a kick to the crotch. I was like, what? What? Five years later? Like, I had never seen anything like that in a movie to take these beloved characters and you're watching them disintegrate in front of you and, and then there's no like redemption at the end. It's like, wait, we got to live with this. And that moment alone is why I ranked this movie number three, that it did things I had never seen before in a film. Yeah. Um, and it handled this ensemble, this huge ensemble cast. Um, it was incredible. It was just a, an incredible movie theater moment, movie theater experience for me. And uh, it snuck its way up into the number three position for me. Where does uh, Infinity War rank on your list, Nick? I would put it in probably seven or eight. That low? Okay. Yeah. Because and I, well, oh no, seven. I, I put it at seven. Because the template had been done for a movie that is in my top four, in my top five. Yeah. Uh, that's Marvel's The Avengers. I'll get to that later. But yeah, yeah. they create where you ask the question, how do they balance this many characters in there? Because yeah. they had spent time investing in all those 16 movies. So when they come here, you don't need an origin story. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. these characters. They're familiar. I Get know the, the vibe. running. And so yeah, just, you, don't, you don't have all that exposition you got to yeah. tread. Yeah. And I, I want to see how they interact with each other now. Let's get right to the meat and potatoes. Like, oh, they, oh well, they, there's a buddy cop movie I can't wait to see. Oh, there's another one I can't wait to see. And so Infinity, is, Infinity War was the one where, to me, that when it, when it ended the way it did, I said, that's wonderful. I'm glad they went there. That's mm -hmm. that's consequences. Mm -hmm. there were, and I saw rumblings of the beginning of the end, which is what Endgame was to me. Endgame mm -hmm. kind of just was the 
the fall of the Roman Empire. You start you start to see the hubris of it. I'm like, oh, I don't like where this is going. This is not. Uh, I hope you guys don't screw this up because because <laughs> there are little things where they the Russos were like, oh, because there are so many characters, we have to move things along. Like yeah. when they when they they had th- they beat Thanos. They had him. Well, that's what's interesting is you think that the movie's going to end on the typical cliche ending. Thor swoops in and saves the day. And part of me was like, yay. But then part of me was like, oh, we've seen this before. And then Thanos goes, you should have gone for the head. And I'm like, what? what? I love that. That Damn. part was great. The part, I was talking about the one before when they had him on his home planet, and mm. for whatever reason, oh, when they had the Star Lord comes and like, helmet my, was almost, and, had, and he's the like, glove was almost off. I'm just so yeah. mad that you got rid of my girlfriend. I'm gonna smack him, <laughs> like, dude, you can smack him after the glove comes off. So that's why I'd rather Thanos had done it, like he had broken the control, like he'd done something himself. It wasn't some. Like yeah. Starl having an emo moment and saying, I'm going to hit you. You got rid of my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. People are like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like even Robert Downey Jr. is like, dude, get the glove. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you're the only one not doing anything. You're the only one like asking questions. Yeah. To mm-hmm. a guy who's getting like mind, <laughs> you know, mind raked or something like that. It's like, yeah, what yeah. are you doing? My girl. So yeah. that's why stuff like that was like, oh, boy. But yeah, it, it easily could have concluded on a cliche ending. And, and yeah. like I said, it was a bold choice to not. Go there, Andrew. What are your memories of seeing uh, uh, Infinity War? Saw opening night, and I m- pretty much mostly agree with Nick. Um, it's my it's number nine for me. Okay. Well. Um, it was huge and epic, and it was probably almost three hours long, right? I think yeah, both, both of those. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thing about it is, is I knew that they that Endgame was coming out a year later. I those I think they were filmed back to back, right? And even though they mostly kept the spoilers out of, pop, you know, pop culture, in the back of my mind, at, at the end of, at the very end of Infinity War, I said, okay, I know exactly what's going to happen in the next movie. So, yeah. and then, it, like with Nick, it's like, okay, they they did this. What what more can they do? Yeah. And that's why every movie since then it has... I agree. And, and that... Great. that... Let's talk about Endgame for a moment because it's yes. not on my top ten list, and the reason is nor this. mine. It it undid everything that was so great about Infinity yes, War, yes. and it and it it introduced the fact that there are no real consequences in the MCU. Yes, which is kind of heartbreaking. Yes. Now, yes, there were some consequences. I, I'll take that back. There were some consequences, but they pretty much undid that that bold ending from the first movie and and you know and like you said at the end of infinity war i'm thinking well the only way to, to, to get past this it has to involve time travel that's the only thing that i can even think of and, and like you said sure enough that's exactly what they did and so there, and it's it the way they feel, did it yeah and once you do the the predicted at least do it well and you didn't yeah and and what i was most uh, upset about was the character assassination that you spent do it's it's what same thing with game of thrones you know, when your characters do something wildly, you know, insane, that they would never have done that because they've shown they wouldn't do that. Now, if someone like Strange or the Watcher had come and give Cap the choice after all this time, don't you, do you want to retire? I could make it away. He's like, yeah. And if he'd done something like that, Cap made this that decision on his own. Yeah. And it's on that because now when you get time travel and we get all Doc, Doc and Marty, my brain starts to get a little squirrely because that timeline right. is the straight because he was there to hand off the shield, which exactly. is why I went, oh, this doesn't make a lot of sense. This actually, that hurt me for Cap. And then Tony going, whatever you do, keep everything the same. I'm like, go to hell, Tony. Mm-hmm. Five, you know, it wasn't just Earth that vanished off. Uh, the universe lost 50% yeah. of the people. They're planted on like that Glenn Close planet. They were like, <laughs> what? why would I give five years so I love you 3,000? Have another kid. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, God, we could go into this on a whole podcast yeah. on its own, but what you were saying about Captain America. So he goes, he does a selfish thing. He goes back in time to satisfy an itch that he had. And the problem is now that he's now living that time, that timeline in solitude and secrecy, watching nine 11 happen, watching assassinations, he would happen, never do watching, watching terrible Tony's, things happen Tony's in the parents world die. and not, doing shit about it yeah. that's kind of hard to leaving swallow. bucky to be tortured for 70 years yeah <laughs> yeah just so you can hand up the shield 
Are you going to tell me about her? No, I don't think I will. I'm like, you have a, I'm not I'm worried about the ring, Cap. I'm not worried about the ring. My God. Yeah. Now, I will say that Endgame had some incredible moments. Sure. Probably Absolutely. one of my favorite moments in movie history was, I knew it, yeah. when Cap picked up the hammer. Um, but, like I said, there's there's a lot of flaws, and it was sort of a cop-out to get out of the dilemma I, that was set up in, in I feel like they War, didn't know what so. to do. I yeah. feel like they wrote themselves in that corner. And yes. It's yes. okay. If, yeah. you, if you're going to use time travel, use it, but then have Strange do it. Strange was the one guy who did the whole in, in Infinity War yeah. like he was having yes. a seizure. One way out. Out of 14 million out. something <laughs> combinations, I was like, okay, you're the guy that gets the burden of having two different timelines. You you're, you carry the sin. Yeah. You're the one guy who like listen, like, hey, uh, hey, how are you feeling, Steven? Yeah, I'm feeling great. And then if he has a downward spiral in phase four, you can say it's like his form of PTSD. Right, right. Like, I remember horrible stuff, guys. Oh, sure, yeah. But, so all of you can have your wonderful reality. <laughs> My mind is like a nightmare. Saw it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you touched a moment ago. There's number four on my list, The Avengers 2012. Yep. And again, this set sort of a template for bringing in all these characters under one banner and somehow giving everybody just enough screen time to make it work. It wasn't convoluted. It wasn't a, a big mess. It was thoroughly entertaining. Um, and uh, Avengers showed that it can be done, DC, uh, and brought all these great characters together. Um, and, and each one of these characters, for the most part, had their origin story and was introduced to the movie going public and then all brought together on screen. And there was conflicts at time and, and, but then they were able to put it all, all behind them and work together as a, as a team. And, uh, it was just really, really great. Um, and so this particular movie earned $1.5 billion yeah. on a $220 million budget. Again, my God, I wish I could invest $220 million and get $1.5 billion back. Yeah, and that was the Mouse's first movie after they picked up Marvel. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. That was their first one. And, of course, right off the bat, they started to stick their nose in it because Cap never wore that suit again, did he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like, we were like, that's a weird-looking suit. Go back to the other one. Yeah. Now, this might be one of the rare times in movie history that this has happened that Critics and audience agreed on the Rotten Tomatoes score, 91% on the Avengers. How often on Rotten Tomatoes do you see the critics and the audience align? I thought that was a mistake. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought the algorithm probably like had yeah. a stroke or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so everyone universally agrees that Avengers was pretty darn great. Uh, number four on my list, Nick? Yeah, I put that at, that, that was something else on three? Or would that be three? That'd be three for me. Now, Avengers would have been three yeah. on my list and was three on my list until uh, Infinity War came out and supplanted it. But, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, that movie, you could watch. That's one of those movies where if, I, if it's on, I'll just stop and see what point it's on, and I'll see if I can just hop on yeah. the train and watch it and enjoy it. Yeah. That, that movie, for Whedon, for all his faults, did, be did very well in that movie. From mm -hmm. the opening to the end, I went, you know what? Especially with that big fight at the end, I said, this is well done. That was a well-paced, didn't it's feel long. It's the reason you go to movies and eat popcorn and there's and so I saw much that going with, on. I saw that opening night at a packed theater, and we it was that one of those the good old days, the shared experience. Didn't know people, everyone's like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. And just the, the humor and stuff, like, you know, when Thor's like, you know, be careful what you say about Loki and and he's like, he killed all these people. He's like, well, he's adopted. adopted yeah. It's like the humor was just greater. God you know, mother, no, you wear her drapes. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> when, he was, when he was like uh, Shakespeare in the, in, in the park. Oh. <laughs> God mother, no, you wear her, her drapes. Oh, that's that's right. like, what you or just when like, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean swing point break. Tony, uh, Tony Stark comes out of his, you know, slumber at the end. And I know a great shawarma place. And then they. There's that payoff at the end, yeah, uh, yeah. the mid credit scene. Please tell me nobody scene, kissed but... me. Like, he yeah. almost got almost all of the co comedy lines. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's just his character. That's just great. Just great. Andrew, where's it fall on your list? It's not on my top 10. Avengers, not in your top 10. I liked it. Uh, Any uh, complaints, comments? Uh, please <laughs> look up Andrew on Facebook. <laughs> Do not come after me. I, I liked it, but it compared to the other movies that came right before it and right after it, it doesn't really, like, I, well, that's, I have, I actually, I've only seen it once, mm. so. Wow. 
Wow. Maybe that's why I saw it in the theater when it came out. Interesting. Same with Ultron. Um, and they're not, they weren't, neither one were like really memorable to me. Interesting. But um, wow. of, I, of course I remember liking them, but uh, definitely didn't make, make my top 10. Wow. Yeah. All right. Now we're on to my first non MCU movie. That's where things get interesting. Uh, this is my highest ranked movie from Sony. Number five, Spider Man 2002. Directed by Detroit's own Sam Raimi. Yeah. Uh, introduced Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Kirsten Dunst as his love interest. James Franco, he, he, he was just more of a, I don't know, what would you, he just kind of caused trouble, but didn't really have a whole lot to do in that film. Uh, but Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, just like, he chewed the scenery, man. He was, he yeah. just made the most of that role as I mean, Willem Dafoe can stand there motionless and still s- steal a scene. When he was monologuing into that mirror near the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thing having I was that like... conversation. That was pretty interesting, yeah. Uh, this movie, of course, when it came out, man, it was a game changer. It set records for opening weekends and long haul. It earned uh, a total of uh, $825 million on a $139 million budget, which at the time you have to imagine, you know, in 2002, Hundred thirty nine million? Are you crazy? And then to earn eight hundred twenty five million—that's pretty incredible. Um, now that this—that was, was a big year, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Now this surprises me, and I—I I, this looked like a typo to me. The Rotten Tomatoes score from critics was ninety percent, sixty seven percent from the audience. That doesn't sound right, does no, it? No, no, no. I'm doesn't not sure. Sound. I that's, have that's low, but I I, I know I knew it was going to be lower than the critics score. Yeah. Now, I only, when I saw it in the theater, I absolutely loved it. I had one complaint that there were moments where the CGI Spider Man just looked like a video game character. It didn't have real world physics when he was swinging the blimp scene through. Yeah. First fighting the. Yeah. And and, uh, that's the only complaint I had. It's like, couldn't you, like, Get a Cirque du Soleil guy, put him in a Spider-Man outfit, put him in front of a green screen, and have him swing from rope to rope. To me, that would have been more effective than doing it 100% CGI. Like, when Spidey was in costume, he was 100% CGI when he was doing acrobatics. And that's the only thing that bugged me about this particular movie. Other than that, I loved the story. I loved everything about it. Um, And again, a, a pretty shocking ending that, when uh, when uh, his girlfriend, what's her name? The character's name, Kirsten Dunst's character. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, um, P, uh, P, uh, damn it, MJ, Mary, Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. Yeah. Jeez. Um, again, the ending was interesting where she's like, maybe, you know, this can work out. And realizing that for her own protection that he had to turn her down, that was heart-wrenching. That was, Oh, no. Especially He's, after they won MTV's Kiss of the Year. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> talk about it. Yeah, the Upside Down one. I actually <laughs> visited that alley. If you go, if you take the tour of Warner Brothers, you can stand in the alley where uh, that famous kiss took place. And here's something interesting. That same alley, the same uh, fire escape and all that, picture the cover of the Purple Rain album where Prince is on his motorcycle and Apollonia is standing in a doorway exact same location where the kiss took really? place. Yeah. I'm sure huh. I'm sure it's in a lot of other things. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, it appears in a lot of movies. It appeared in uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yes. When Pee-wee's in the alley and it's raining yeah, yeah, and the yeah. gang members come out and he goes, ha! Ah! Yeah. Same alleyway. It's, oh, my it's goodness. Really, and now I, I know it well enough that when it does turn up in a movie, I'm like, I know that alley. Yeah. Um, but that was an iconic moment. I mean, if we were to talk about iconic movie moments, that upside-down kiss was pretty pretty iconic so I, I loved everything about it. it yeah was it flawed yes 67 percent flawed no no it was great and again it introduced a new era of realistic yeah. superhero movies that you're like it wasn't like the old tv show uh where it looked like he was wearing pajamas and, oh, and swim goggles um this was like wow yeah they can do things with superheroes the one where you thought the stuntman was going to die because it looked like they were just he was holding onto a crane and then they threw him off a yeah. building and he's like they yeah cut or it just be before he hit getting something. pulled up by a rope and his yeah. hands he'd just be kicking his hands and legs as they hoisted him up the side of a building um so yeah i've seen i've seen superhero movies come a long way and, and spider-man 
again, should be looked at as a, a revolutionary movie that introduced a new era of, of comic book characters. I, I think it might have fallen the way of uh, First Avenger. Because people were thinking, you know, kind of like Tobey Maguire, can yeah. he pull it off? This guy, the guy from, you know, all those indie movies, uh, I don't know. Can, yeah. I wasn't sure. But then initially when you saw it, you went, okay, there is a certain humor to Peter Parker, which yeah. took a while for him to develop, unlike Andrew Garfield, who was pretty quick with it. See, I'm the opposite on Andrew Garfield. I thought Andrew Garfield almost came across as too mean-spirited. Like, he hits a, a bad guy in the face with his webbing, and as the bad guy is suffocating to death, Andrew Garfield is throwing out quips. And, yeah. I, and even though it's a bad guy, I'm like, come on, man. Let him breathe. He, he played and a I, meaner I, Spider-Man, but yeah. he was a quippy Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I, Toby was a serious Peter, Peter yeah. Parker. I'm like, okay. I just, I don't know. I, I liked Toby's demeanor as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. It looked like he was having a blast in this role, just having fun with it. Um I, I I loved everything about it, and like I said, it's my number five Marvel movie, and might hold the same position uh, if I was to talk about just uh, comic book movies in general. It ranks pretty high up there for me. Nick, did it crack your top ten? Did it crack my top ten? No. Now some people say that Spider Man Two with Doc Ock. A lot of people say that's the best of the Spider Man movies. I enjoyed it. But I prefer the original only because of what it introduced to the world. So, um, so did any of the Tobey Maguire movies? Uh... I, no, I enjoyed the first I, of all the three. I enjoyed the first one, and also because I think at the time, two thousand two, it was a. You also have to figure out like where were you as you. I mean, Two Towers was coming out, Episode Two was coming out, and everyone had high hopes for that. And then until it kind of like took a shotgun to the family jewels, <laughs> and, and and set people up on. Like, and that was like, and that was also came out that summer. So everyone was going, "Oh my God, this this not supposed to happen." I hope this kind of saves me, yeah. Because two towers doesn't come out till Christmas, so everyone's like, "Some someone saved the summer," and Spider Man did that, and yeah. yeah. So I I I I don't put it as in my top ten, but I I have no animosity towards the movie. Yeah. Like it's not because it, the movie was terrible that it's not my top ten. Yeah. So let me put it that way. And that you know that's a good point that you know there are a lot a lot of good movies out there and some have to go. Yeah, some, I mean you know look you expanded. I thought we were talking about just Marvel. Then you <laughs> sent up the before the show we're including Sony and Fox on. Well yeah. then hey, people are getting knocked off. Yeah, it's kind of like when when I sat down when the AFI came out with their hundred greatest movie list. Originally they did it in 1997 and then they adjusted it after Titanic came out because they wanted to include Titanic. And so I'm like, I want to make my 100 greatest movie list. And at first, I struggled to come up with 100. Then I was at 150. <laughs> and I'm like, now I got to eliminate 50 movies, which is one of the hardest things I've ever done yeah. in my life. And that was kind of the, the premise with this list is, okay, you could easily come up with a top 15, top 20 list. And then what goes? What do you eliminate? Andrew, did you eliminate Spider-Man or did it crack your top 10? It didn't crack my top 10. Interesting. No. Um, I, I, I saw in the theater, loved it, loved the second one, did not like the third one. Oh, it was, it, there was a, oh. there was a lot of promise there. Like I was really excited about Spider-Man going toe to toe yeah, with, with Venom, Venom and yeah. it just wasn't executed yeah. well. No, I, it was a lot of fun. Um, seeing Spider-Man on the big screen, you know, for the first time, and just two years after X-Men. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I was only... 16 or 17 when it came out. So, yeah, I loved mm. it. Mm. All right. Now, number six on my list, we're going back to the MCU. This particular movie is, in my opinion, not necessarily my favorite movie, but I think the best Marvel movie as far as story and intrigue and drama and conflict. Uh, and that is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yes. Uh, 2014, a lot of people have very high regard for this movie. It introduced Robert Redford, who, uh, spoiler alert, is sort of the main uh, antagonist in this movie. And, again, directed by the Russo brothers. Um, this sowed that seed of mistrust. Who do you trust? And it for a comic book movie, it really provided commentary on the state of the world, yep. state of the country. Yep. Who do you trust? What side are you on? 
um, and seeing, you know, the flag waving Captain America on the opposite side of things, this, if you strip away the comic book aspect of this movie, you're talking about the Manchurian candidate. You're talking about, you know, all the president's men, like you're talking about the greatest, like cold war movies and political intrigue and all that. It had all of those elements except they were wearing silly costumes in this one. But it, in my opinion, has uh, one of the, if not the best story of all the Marvel movies. Um, it was enormously popular despite its dark tone. It earned $714 million on a $170 million budget. 90% positive reviews from critics, 92% from audience. So it is beloved by the movie going audience and comic book movie fans and specifically Marvel movie fans. This one ranks really highly with, uh, with film goers. So it's number six on my list. And if you were to argue that it should be higher on my list, I would listen to that argument. I would consider that it's a great movie. Nick, where does uh, two, two interesting. It was number two for me because uh, I, I saw that and I went, the commentary that it, it, it made, the, Robert Redford made a compelling argument. And I, and I thought to myself, going, you could see both sides yeah, of the and argument. I went, my God, am I both sizing with the villain? <laughs> what does it say about me as a human being? And, then, and that makes the most interesting villain. When you go, you know what? I have a point. He wasn't like, you know, you know they, they hated my quiche, so everyone must suffer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I lost my parents to this. He's like, look, this is the yeah. world. The world's a dangerous place. And this is how we've been, do- we've been kind of sh- guiding humanity. And it barred a lot of factual history, working with Hydra, working with the Nazis to, uh, you know, make our space program better yeah. than the, the Soviets. Yeah. So they brought elements when they when they took that, and just to see Steve react to that and go, what he's like, this isn't freedom, and he's having that discussion with, with uh, uh, Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, and you could see that Sam Jack may not be as convinced about it, because he's going when after he has the conversation, he's like, man, I'm on the wrong, I'm on the opposite side of Cap on this. He could be naive, but this man did fight a world war. You yeah, know? So yeah. I was like, so you kind of see him going this route, and then Robert Redford was a perfect villain. Yeah. He, he said, listen, this is how it is, and we, yeah. we, we're we yeah. everywhere. And, the, you know, this movie was born out of the mistrust that existed in the wake of 9-11, where, you know, you had a lot of people coming forward saying that it was an inside job and there was a conspiracy involved. And, you know, in the wake of 9-11, we invaded the wrong country, and you're sitting there like, what is happening here? Is, is, is Am I seeing what I'm seeing? And yeah. this movie took that anxiety, that questioning of authority, and turned it into this spectacular movie. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. And some of the people, when he says, who are you identifying? Stephen Strange. And he starts, and they're saying, these are the people that they're, we're going to, the, the algorithm's going to target and get rid of. Yeah. And you wonder, well, you know, you shoot Banner, you're going to have a Hulk come in. <laughs> you, know, you guys haven't done your homework. That, that was one yeah. of the one problems, like, you guys want to Okay, but Stephen Strange, before he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme, you know, if we got rid of him, what would have happened? I mean, the, yeah. so it's 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 an interesting take. I that's why I I didn't even see it as a superhero movie for the longest time because Cap wasn't in the costume for a yeah. long for most of it. Yeah, yeah, it was basically like a spy thriller. I agree. It could easily be labeled that. Should be labeled. And that. Captain America, when they put the wanted poster, Captain America, I went, wow, this is going to be th- that's a tough stuff. I got that a- that alert on my phone. Captain America's one. I'm like, okay, I, I don't know. Yeah. That, yeah. that's, that's rough, guys. You, first of all, what am I going to do? Yeah. You want me to make a citizen's arrest of Captain America? You can, <laughs> he, he flip a bus on me. Yeah. Andrew, did it crack your top ten? No, but it... Wow. But it... I mean... Shocking I, the, me today. There is one that I could swap it out with, and it would it, it could be in my top ten. Mm-hmm. It's just that there, there are so many good movies. But, no, it was dark, like you said. Um, might be the most political... Yeah, MCU movie. You're right there. Oh, easy. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it in several years. I, yeah. I would, I would like to rewatch that one. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, but seeing, it, it was almost as big, not quite as big, almost as big as uh, Avengers and Infinity War in terms of the total number of people involved, except for they were fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. Rather than a big bad. Um, but yeah, no, it was. Are you talking about Civil War? Isn't that no, no, no? No, we're talking about Winter Soldier. Well. I, I mean, there you're... there were Civil War did split our heroes into two factions, but then that continued through Winter Soldier, right? Civil War came before. No, Winter, Winter, Winter Soldier. After. Winter Soldier was first. Oh, was it? Okay, but the I guess I'm the sorry. seed <laughs> the seed was planted in 
Winter Soldier, yeah. and then they were forced to make that yeah. decision. And okay, but yeah. um, but both of those Winter Soldier and Civil War, um, they're so so good, and just yeah. uh, like up there with the first Captain America, I think those three movies, th- that trilogy of of movies, is my favorite uh, out of the whole MCU out of any character. I agree. Yeah, yeah, solid. It was a, a Captain America trilogy is outstanding. It, it never waned at all. It was yeah. solid all the way through all three movies. Yeah. Um, but, but I also had to take into account some other things. So uh, it's it's tough. Yeah. But I, and it did have some great moments too. One one of my favorite Marvel moments is the elevator scene where Rogers gets on the elevator and he's like, "Okay, yeah, with the other dudes, yeah. Anyone yeah. who wants to leave, leave now, and let's take care of this." It's like really holy cow so yeah it had some really really great moments so all right that's number six on my list number seven you guys are gonna laugh deadpool and wolverine is number seven on my list no, no that's that's oh, fine. top 10 favorite marvel movies mm. not necessarily greatest but favorite uh i enjoyed it that much and i've only seen it the one time so far i plan on having multiple rewatches of this and i'm sure when it is released on dvd i'm going to add it to my collection uh directed by sean levy is that am i pronouncing that right levy is that his last name uh starring ryan reynolds hugh jackman of course uh set records for opening weekends uh domestically it pulled in uh, 211 million in its opening weekend uh, adding an additional 233 million internationally, netting in its opening weekend 441 million dollars for a Deadpool movie. That's that's mainstream Batman numbers. Deadpool and Wolverine pulled in those kind of numbers. What? It's got to be in the top three for opening weekend for our rated movie, right? Like I think five? it's number one for our rated. Yeah. Number one. Um, oh, yeah. Number one. yeah, I think it's like top for Marvel movies or something like that. And or, every one of those Fox references made sense. Suck it, Fox. Because <laughs> that, those are the same people that he spent a decade trying to get the Deadpool movie made, and only because yeah. he released that footage online, and it sparked fans pestering Fox. They went, yeah. hey, I guess we better do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, there is a discrepancy here between uh, critics and audience on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, critics did not love this movie as much as the audience. 78% from critics. A whopping 97% from audience. Now, think about that. The top six movies that I talked about before Deadpool and Wolverine, none of them hit 97% on Rotten Tomatoes from the audience. This is the highest ranked Marvel movie. And the only one that's slightly above that is the next movie that I'm going to talk about. But... 97% 97% positive reviews from the audience for Deadpool and Wolverine. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. And think back to that moment. Do you guys, I, I, I remember this so vividly. What was it, a year or two ago? Uh, Ryan Reynolds is sitting in front of what looks like a webcam or something. And you see Hugh Jackman wandering around in the background. <laughs> and he's like, hey, Hugh, you want to uh, suit up as Wolverine one more time? And he goes, yeah, why not? And I'm like, what, what now? What, what's going on here? What a what a genius long overdue pairing when they revealed a uh, Wolverine's color scheme or uh, yeah Wolverine's color scheme in his costume it's like why have they not done this from the get go they even joked about it in yep. the first X-Men movie well, what am I going to wear yellow spandex yeah yeah man did it work it yep. really worked on screen better than anything they came up with in those other Mar- uh, X-Men movies um Again, is it flawed? Yeah, it has some flaws, but I, I just absolutely loved it. So I know we talked about it at the opening of the podcast. Anything you guys want to add? Did it crack your top ten? Or Oh, yeah, it's in my top ten for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, no, no. I wasn't I, sure. I, I thought you were looking at me like, come on. No, 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 no. I, I enjoyed the hell out of the movie. And it, you know, it, I'm amazed that they kept all the cameos quiet. I yeah, didn't, I didn't yeah. go looking for them because I, yeah. I, I, I want to try to avoid it, but – just from a casual observer point of view, they did a really good job making sure there were no leaks on there. Because Until San Diego Comic-Con, where they basically introduced the entire cast on stage. And if you had not seen the movie by that point, yeah. the whole movie was ruined for yeah, you. Yeah, then you're kind of like, oh, I guess all of these people are in the movie. <laughs> huh. But so, you know, I feel bad for you. If you haven't seen San Diego Comic-Con, then don't. But 
uh, I when I saw it, I went, "Wow!" I enjoyed the cameos. I enjoyed the char- I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the dynamics. Like I said, the, we talked about the plot. Yeah, I could take it or leave it because he's you know, especially in the second movie when he went back in time to save all of them, and that was the whole thing. You, I'm going to use cable to try do this and that. And so that's why that opening when he's applying for the job kind of made me feel, you don't know your, your why are you doing this? Yeah, and in hindsight, I'm sure it had a lot to do with his relationship. You know, I don't. I guess in the real world, especially in the movie world, that when when love is on the rocks, it makes you do stupid things. So yeah. that might have been the motivation but for that. I also hate that trope where they always <laughs> they, they take the girl like she she was dating someone else. Yeah, yeah. I went after all the stuff that I saw you do with him in one and two. Who would match up to that? It'd be <laughs> yeah. boring. Yeah, anyone that you're with you're is going to be boring. Absolutely correct. Yeah, like, who did yeah. I would almost call it a bluff. Go, yeah, I, go find find someone better than what you're having with him. You're yeah. you're both crazy. Yeah, you're yeah. both insane who, and perfect for each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that, that 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 stuff when they do that kind of someone, it's not real. Yeah. yeah, you went back in time to save her. Yeah. Andrew, did it crack your top ten? It did not. I didn't think so. I I would give it an eighty six percent. Okay. If, 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 I, if I were to rate it on Rotten Tomatoes, um, like I said before we started recording, um, I still like the first two better. I think both of them have better mm-hmm. stories. Yeah. Um, but this one had the most nostalgia and the the most um, like the best cameos. Like that's what yeah. really did. Yeah. Um, and of course the the pairing with with Hugh Jackman was great. Yeah. The villain. Well, they. I, I guess initially <laughs> in early drafts of the script, they were going to go with a different villain. I, it was a, a more a more uh, well known villain, I guess. And then for some reason, they changed it over to the villain that was in the film. And I guess what I liked about that particular villain, even though I knew nothing about her, was how how omnipotent she was. Like she was so damn powerful. Like, oh my god, how do you, how do you stop this person? Uh, and so that was intriguing to me. Like, how are we going to defeat her? There's that yeah. aspect, but it's I kind of uh, I'm with Andrew on this one. For that, she enjoyed being there. Like her yeah. things, like I'm I'm queen of the the this place, the void. I went. She's with like the, all, with what you can do. This yeah. is this is it with a bunch of Mad Max type people underlings. Yeah. It's not like you had your own. What was it, like Jeff Goldblum who had his own. Like, hey, everybody, we're have like. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be like Caligula. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm running a thing. Like this was like Ant Man's body. Like who yeah, lived yeah, in yeah. the butt? Like they never went there. I was like, are yeah, we yeah. just doing the upper torso? Did is, is, is this uh, mansion is there, yeah. go all the way downtown? I mean, what are we doing here? Paul Rudd's finally shown his age. That yeah, was, yeah, was yeah right line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then and then having the TVA do that. I said we went through this with Loki. Uh, we restructured administration so that yeah someone can do this exactly what he was doing even yeah. though he did it in secret but we're gonna i, I want to get more into the multiverse right. a little bit later but um uh there is one moment in deadpool and wolverine then we'll move on and i, I don't want to spoil anyone uh, spoil this for anyone so i have, have to be very careful but there's a moment in this movie that i would rank as not just one of the greatest comic book moments movie moments of all time but uh one of the greatest movie moments of all time. Um, and I, I hope you guys know what I'm referring to. I don't want to give out too information, too much information because there are people who might be listening to this who haven't seen it, but there's a moment late in the film when Deadpool and Wolverine are like, all right, let's go kick some ass. And Wolverine does something where my jaw hung open. And I'm like, this is one of the greatest moments I've ever seen in my life. So I just want to say that, that, uh, that was such a great, was that when moment. they were, Huh? Hmm? Huh? In the van? No, 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 no. This is towards the to, end of the movie. I had, when... to, I had to take a leak during that time, so I missed. Something. Oh, all right. I think <laughs> it had to do with something along those lines. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you saw my my gesture, yeah. we'll talk after the podcast. Okay, okay. If you're not picking up on sure, it, sure. but uh, it. Let me just say that uh, Deadpool and Wolverine oh, had one of my I, favorite movie moments. And you wondered, I know you're and you wondered why it took so long for them to do exactly. that part too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, the next movie on my list, coming in at number eight, this is the movie I said just a moment ago, is just slightly higher than Deadpool and Wolverine as far as Rotten Tomato audience members who gave it a 98%. Deadpool and Wolverine was 97%. Uh, Critics gave it a 93%. Um, uh, It surprises me that this is my second favorite Spider-Man movie. I am talking about No Way Home, which is the... Technically, 
third Spider-Man movie in the Tom Holland right uh, universe with and, Civil War being one uh, number one. Uh, well, he wasn't in Civil War, was he? Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he was in. Yeah, he's that, in Civil War. Oh, that but was it, the first time he came in. Yeah, but that's not. No, a, no, no. But on my on my list, I'm uh, oh. Spider-Man with Tobey oh. Maguire was number one as far as Spider-Man movies. Okay. This is number two as far as Spider-Man movies. Okay. Um, honestly, as far as the Tom Holland movie goes, my reaction was eh. They're okay. Like, I loved his introduction in Civil War, but as far as his standalone movies, I was like, eh, they're all right. Um, but what they did in No Way Home, just the nostalgia aspect, and again, I'm not a huge fan of the multiverse, but what they did, bringing back Tobey Maguire, bringing back Andrew Garfield, um, hearing that audience cheer and roar with each revelation and seeing them you know, fight crime together. It almost brought that meme, that little meme of the three Spider-Men pointing at each other. It kind of brought that to life uh, in this movie. And uh, it was just uh, that nostalgia aspect and uh, just loved everything about this movie. Uh, Obviously the Rotten Tomato audience agrees with me, 98% positive. I mean, that that's got to put it in the upper echelons of highest rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, directed by John Watts, uh, again, Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, who, <laughs> he, he kind of caused everything that happened in that movie. Um, and then they bring back Tobey Maguire and well, Garfield. He didn't. Tom Holland did. You can't interrupt a spell. You don't get to do that. Oh, I changed my mind midway. It's like, uh, I'm doing something really complicated. Yeah. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm messing with the warp cord. Do you mind right now? Like, no, 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 no. Oops, I spilled my beer in it. Like, yeah, are you yeah. kidding me right now? Yeah, sometimes I have, I have problems with movies that cause the dilemma that they now have to deal with. Uh, a perfect example was, um, uh, what's the movie that Will Smith was in uh, where he played Deadeye or Deadshot or whatever? Oh, Suicide Harley Squad. Went. Yeah. In yeah. Suicide Squad, they formed this squad to fight a villain of their own creation, which yeah. was so stupid to me. And that's, in a way, that's kind of what happened in No Way Home. But uh, the reason that they did what they did was to cater to fans and bring the three Spider-Men, Spider-Mans together. Um, and I absolutely love this movie. And, and again, fans reacted. This another $2 billion movie on a $200 million investment. Uh, did it make that much? Boy, wow. Two billion globally. Yeah. 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 That nostalgia factor well, kicks in hard. Yeah. It does. So that of the three main Tom Holland movies, this was my favorite. And uh I, I own it on DVD. As a matter of fact, this movie made me buy the first two in a three movie box set. Mm-hmm. I didn't buy the first two Tom Holland movies until this movie came out, and then I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go buy. I can buy all three of them. So I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Um, I, I'd be surprised if it cracked your top ten, but I'm going to ask anyways. Nick, does this crack your top ten? No. Do any of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies crack your top ten? No. Okay. No, they they don't. Not because, again, I, I not that I don't enjoy them. I actually enjoyed the first Tom Holland movie the most because that showed – because that not because of Iron Man, because it showed this kid. He said – there was a line in that first Tom Holland movie. I need the suit. You know, I'm nothing without it. If you're nothing without the suit, then you don't deserve it. And that yeah. kind of, that was a very interesting message. Yeah. Because Spider-Man isn't the suit. It's the, you know, what, what are you going to do with your great power comes great responsibility. Like, yeah. Do that. You don't need all the fancy gadgets. Now that's not an interesting thing. We never really, you might love this. You might hate this, but we never really got an origin story from the Tom Holland version of Spider-Man. He was kind of, he was introduced in civil war but we never saw the spider bite. We never saw... Which is fine, you know, because we've done... That yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. You might say, well, that's good, because we've seen these origin stories done over and over and over again. In some cases, it's natural, where webbing is shooting out of your wrist. But in the comic books, it was this boy genius building these devices. So, um, so yeah, so that was interesting that we never really got a standalone origin story from the Tom Holland version of spider-man but uh so we again we sort of hit the ground running in civil war and then by the time uh homecoming comes out the the character is already well established and they could just and the second movie did not and second movie was such it was so weird because this character 
came over and caused all this trouble, Mis- pretending to be a hero. Mysterio. Yeah, yeah Mysterio. Yeah. I, I didn't get the whole premise of that movie. And even if whatever happened at the end, that because whatever happened at the end of that movie is what sparks the main cause for, you know, the the third Tom Holland movie. Right, trying to undo the damage. Yeah, yeah. and I was, I was like, there are plenty of ways to do that. <laughs> you know, and even if they do, what are you going to do? He's been helping people. What, are you going to litigate him? What, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. Like that. Then Robert, yeah. then Iron Man would have been sued. Yeah. And so they <laughs> haven't done that. Accessory. Yeah, 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 so there were ways to go about it. And I hate it when you, when you create an expanded universe. Now you have to answer, where are these characters when all this is happening? When, he's, when this kid is going through this stuff, Pepper and Happy, they it's almost like they know how Tony felt about him. Mm-hmm. So you would kind of look out for the kid if he's going through this rough patch. Yeah, yeah. Help him out. Yeah. Yeah, that could have gone a different direction. Andrew, Tom Holland, Spider-Man movies, did any of them crack your top They down? did not. Yeah, I don't I, think so. I, I liked all three of them. Yeah, um, I'm the I'll same let, way. They were, they were enjoyable. Yeah, I saw yeah. all three of them in the theater. I probably open opening night. Um, I liked the first one the best, Homecoming. Yeah. Um, out of the three. But yeah, I I need to rewatch the Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield. I haven't seen those since, pretty much since they came out. Yeah, it's been forever. So. Yeah, I've, I've yeah I've seen the, the the first one. I've seen I don't know countless times. Um, all right, let's move on to number nine on my list. This is our first twentieth uh, century Fox movie on my list, and this this was uh this took a little uh, going back and forth in my brain because. I, I really enjoyed the first X-Men. I thought the second X-Men movie was even better. I really, really liked the second X-Men movie. Um, over the next few movies, they were sort of hit and miss, but for the most part, I enjoyed all the X-Men movies. I enjoyed all the Wolverine movies, including the one where he sang during the French Revolution. Uh, <laughs> Les Mis, they called it. Um, enjoyed that one. Uh, or is that, the great, <laughs> is that the greatest showman? <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so I, for the most part, I enjoyed all the X-Men and Wolverine things. But as I looked into this, I, I'm like, I have to rank this as my favorite X-Men movie. And coming in at number nine on my list of Marvel movies is X-Men Days of Future Past. Uh, 2014, directed by Brian Singer. Uh, Hugh Jackman, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Halle Berry, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. But this guy, I felt, stole the movie. Evan Peters as Quicksilver, who had two amazing sequences. One is where he's saving people from an exploding uh, mansion. And the other sequence is in the kitchen Mm -hmm. where these guards fire these shots and then everything freezes and you're like, what's going on? And all of a sudden Quicksilver being Quicksilver. I, I, I remember seeing that for the first time and my jaw hanging open. Like that's one of the most amazing special effects sequences I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Top 10 incredible moment in, in comic book movies. It, it was just incredible. And then Wolverine like pats him on the back after it's all said and done. It's a good job, kid. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. So that was just an amazing, amazing moment. Enormously successful. $746 million on a $200 million budget. Highly rated on Rotten Tomatoes. 90% from critics, 91% from audience. Both critics and audience alike love this movie. It's my favorite X-Men movie and number nine on my list of top ten favorite Marvel movies. Nick, X-Men. This is your chance to talk about X-Men. Do any of the X-Men movie crack your top ten? Uh, three of them, technically. Interesting. Uh, first class. They crack your top ten. Yeah. So you have three X-Men movies in your top ten. In, uh, they're in the that's, bottom five. That's but fascinating to me. Okay. I enjoyed, first, Explain yourself. I enjoyed first class a lot. Mm-hmm. I really did. I, I loved Michael Fosbender. I, I loved uh, Xavier, I loved McAvoy. I loved the way they, they, they introduced the characters. And I love Kevin Bacon was a perfect villain yeah. in that one. Yes, great. And I, I liked how they developed the characters, and they said, "Okay, this is how you." And you saw, and by the end of the movie, I could see the split. I could see, okay, I see where when they're playing the chess game, I see the origin of where the split is going to come, this divide is going to come, his rage, and then Charles saying how he tries to manage his rage because they're both angry. They mm-hmm. both don't like the way mutants are being treated. Sure. So I enjoy, I enjoy that comment, and I, I like that story. Uh, I count Logan 
as uh, an X-Men movie. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. And I enjoyed Logan. It was so dark. That's the only reason it didn't crack my top 10, but I think most people, if they were to chime in, if we were to take live phone calls, uh, people would call in and say, where the hell's Logan? Most people regard Logan as one of the greatest, not just Marvel movies, but comic book movies. It was existence. it was really well done. I, I Because they glossed over a lot of the origin, they, we just skipped right to the part where this tragedy happened and Xavier and Logan are on the run, and then Daphne Keene stole the show, and she... and. The, the ending of it almost would make me crack. It, that ending alone, I could. If we have the ability to move stuff back into the top five, Logan is one of the prime candidates to yeah. move into the top five, if not the top four, only because that the ending and you see the character come full circle. That's why in Deadpool, when they were talking about it, I went, well, how, "How did we do this?" And then they <laughs> kind of like, tr- like I said, turned into the wave. I went, "Okay, I get it. All right, when I see." Deadpool what you're doing. was like, "Damn it!" And he was, that was has, great. and he has the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that opening. I went, oh my god, they, fair enough. No, I, right. I I love Logan, and yeah, but X-Men all right. So first, first class. class Logan, and does this movie crack your top ten? The Days of Future Past. What's your third X Men movie that cracked your top ten? Yeah, I, I okay. would put, I would put Days of Future Past in my top ten, uh, only because I enjoyed. Again, I'm, I must have a really like dark soul because. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that the future is so messed up and they're trying to prevent that. They're yeah, do- yeah. doing everything they can. And th- so it's this race against time to try and. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. I think this movie came up on our, our time travel uh, podcast. And uh, I, I believe this cracked my top 10 of favorite time travel movies, period. Andrew, uh, X-Men in general, did any of the movies crack your top 10? And if so, which yes. ones? Um, so I love Days of Future Past. Saw that in the theater. It's not my top 10, but it would be in. Somewhere in my, between my 11 and 15. Yeah. Uh, number five is First Class. Love that movie. Absolutely. I'm going to have to revisit it. I remember liking it, it, but I need to revisit it because I don't remember a whole lot about it. Yeah. Now, is that is that where Jennifer Lawrence steps in as Mystique? Yes. Was yeah. that her first? Yep. Yes. All right. And then number two is the first X-Men that came out in 2000. Yeah. I, I know really enjoyed it. it. Looking back now, it's... It does have flaws, you know, oh, yeah. fine. But I this is coming from a kid who who watched the animated X Men, and I, I don't, you might have too. At, yeah, yeah. In nineteen ninety or whatever. And they re, they had another one coming X Men ninety seven. Oh yeah, I watched it. So also a friend of the show, Robert Butler. Him and I used to watch the animated X Men show, and being a <laughs> I, yeah, being fifteen or sixteen when the X Men movie came out, I said I've been waiting since I was five years old to see this. Sure, sure. And the only thing I didn't like about it, because it didn't have Gambit in it, who's my favorite. Yeah, but and I other guess they, that, they had to make some sacrifices. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, oh, it, it hit everything for me. And I don't yeah. know if you guys remember this. At the time, this is before, like I said, before the internet was big people, this was the year 2000. When they announced, well, everyone wants to know, oh, then who's going to play Wolverine? Everyone's asking this question, yeah. and it's this unknown Aussie named and, But Hugh he Jack- was an afterthought. Like, that role was cast, and I forgive me for not recalling the actor's name who was originally cast, but he got tied up in another movie. Uh, I want to say it was... Uh, was it Scott Kahn? Uh, uh, no, I, 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 I don't James know Con. who it was. No. But anyways, the original actor was cast... Oh, ready to go. Yes, he, he was, he was in Mission in Impossible 2. Per- yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the bad guy in Mission Impossible 2. Yeah. I, Sean, name- Sean Bean? No, 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 no. That's uh, Mission it's... Impossible. Yeah. Sean Bean's not Mission Impossible. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, the point is... Sean uh, Bean? I, I thought he was the bad guy in 2, Mission Impossible 2. No, you guys, no, no. You guys have your phone. Look yeah. up Look up who was originally cast as Wolverine. Um, but anyways, so he, he, Hugh Jackman came in as an afterthought. I want to say that literally a week or so yeah. be- before production began, and look what he's done with this role. And what twenty four people- years, twenty four years, and, w- and people initially said he's too tall. Yeah, yeah. Wolverine's a short guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is this guy? <laughs> oh, Dougray Scott. Yeah, Dougray Scott. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So imagine a parallel universe where where Hugh Jackman did not have the opportunity to step in that role and make it his own. Um, what he did with that role has been nothing short of amazing. So, and he was the he yeah. was the show stealer for X Men, two 
two thousand when it first came out, yes. the first movie. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. People were like, "Oh, Patrick Stewart. Oh, Siri and McKellen. Yeah. Kind of old for Magneto, but all right, we'll watch it." One of my favorite moments in the first X Men is when, uh, when Wolverine has his three claws out and he only retracts two of them. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty awesome. That rivalry between him and. Psychotic. Scott, yeah, yeah. You're that a dick. Was, that, yeah. <laughs> and of course, at the time, you're like, what? People are like, two of the most beautiful women on the planet being Re- Rebecca Romaine and Halle Berry in the movie. We got to see What about it. Famke Jensen? Famke oh, Jensen, yeah. too, yeah. No, you're- Come on. You're, oh, <laughs> man. People, and that's what everyone was kind of looking at. They're like, this is really great. And yeah. the guy who played Darth Maul's in it, too, and we can see his face now. Yeah, but, yeah. He played- right. Toad. Uh, Toad. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was in, he was in the uh, Wolverine, right? Was Deadpool it? and Wolverine. Yes. Yeah. It was the same. Spoiler. Right? Well, the same. The same actor, right? Ray. I think Ray, Ray Park. Park. Yeah. yeah. He was uncredited though. Uh, yeah. He was not in the credits. I had to look it up. But kind of weird. Yeah. Now I'm sure I've shared this story since we're talking about X Men. I'm sure I've shared the story on the podcast before, but I'm going to do a little name drop. And uh, in 2022, was it? In the f- no 2023 in the spring. It was Easter Sunday. I went up to the Hollywood sign uh, on the day I was supposed to fly back to Michigan, swung by the Hollywood sign to take some pictures. I always do when I go out to LA. And as I was getting ready to leave, I pass an old man who's kind of struggling to get up the slope there toward the Hollywood sign. And as I turn and look, I'm like, that could not have been Patrick Stewart. I follow him back up where he's kind of catching his breath with his wife, Sonny. And I said, Patrick, and he turned and looked and said, hello. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Professor X, Captain Picard, at the Hollywood sign, like a common tourist. And we got to chit-chat a little bit. I asked if I could take a photo. He said, I'd rather not. There's a lot of people out here. Uh, so I honored that. We, we chatted just briefly. I wished him a good day, and I walked away. But imagine just passing an iconic actor like that on the sidewalk. That, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty great. All right, uh, winding down my top ten. Did you want to add something? Oh, I, I have one more X Men. Oh, if okay. We're still, if we're still on, sure. Throw yeah. out, yeah. Throw out your other. It's X-Men. my number one. Number one on your list of you, you Marvel talked movies. about it three minutes ago. I'm serious? cheating because I can see I can super see dark. Sh- Logan, I uh, Logan. I, I get it. Logan I, is up there with Dark Knight for me in, in, interesting. in uh, comic book movies. Yeah, I loved that movie. It was brutal. Yeah. And that I think that's well, if you want to count uh, Blade, but like the only other R-rated superhero movie what at the, around that time was the first Deadpool, which came out just a year after, and I was like, wow, I I didn't know they were gonna go this hard hard yeah. with it, but man, I, I loved it. Yeah. I, I love how it take, took place yeah. in a little bit, just a little bit in the future, and the cars were like slightly different, you know. <laughs> Gas was six fifty a gallon. Yeah. at the gas station. No, I, I'm. I mean, I'm there with you. I, I really liked it when I saw it. But this may surprise you that after seeing it in a the theater, that's the one and only time I've ever watched this movie. I've never revisited it. Maybe just because of the darkness, but uh, I liked it. But I, in a way that I liked, and I, I, I'm embarrassed to almost make this comparison, but I liked Logan the way I liked. Schindler's List, yes, and you know uh, movies like that. They're great movies, but I I can't sit and watch them over and over and over again. I, I can't do that to myself. And Logan <laughs> is kind of like that. It's so dark, and I don't want to relive that over and over and over. So I, I agree with you. It's a yeah. great movie. It's just yeah. not. One I'm of my surprised favorites. that uh, Jackman did not get a nomination. Yeah, I was really yeah. surprised by that because yeah. the way it the... should have been regarded like The Dark Knight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. No, I'm glad you got that in there. All right. Number 10 on my list. Uh, the, the main reason that this movie is number 10 on my list is because um, after Marvel had introduced all this main, these main characters that we'd grown up with, uh, giving, them, giving them all origin stories and putting out pretty great movies over the course of 10 years, they, inter- they announced that they're going to do a movie with some characters I had never heard of. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And as I started seeing pictures and stuff, I'm like, this looks like a disaster. But it's the movie that made me realize that up until that point, Marvel can do no wrong. And I am talking about Guardians of the Galaxy, Mm -hmm. 2014, directed by James Gunn, starring Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, uh, Dave Bautista, Michael Rooker, who just just embraced that character of Yondu, Karen Gillan, uh, 
voices of Bradley Cooper and, of course, Vin Diesel, uh, who probably got paid several million dollars for about 10 seconds of studio (laughs) time. Um, It earned, uh, the first movie earned $773 million on an approximately $200 million budget. So this is a movie that just sort of came out of nowhere and and people freaking loved. Before that, James Gunn had only done small indie movies pretty much. And then he goes to do this and, and makes... Three quarters of a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. And both, again, another movie that both critics and audience agree, 92% yeah. uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. And I'm, I'm going to say I enjoyed the second one. Maybe not as much as the first one, but I enjoyed the second one. The third one was a bit of a downer. I thought yeah. it sort of, I don't know. I don't want to say it got political, but um, it was a little bit of a downer. It kind of ended on a down note. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, Guardians of the Galaxy took these minor characters and t- produced a great movie, an ensemble cast. And I'm like, okay, Marvel, let's, let's see what you got. And they thought they could do it again. And then came the Eternals. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, like, and well, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. So, um, but this just barely cracked my top 10, uh, you guys, guardians, top 10 material. Number seven for me. Number seven I, on your I list. love the first Guardians. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Love the so, music, the yeah. soundtrack. The soundtrack was great, and it was fun as heck. It was, that's, yeah. that's the thing. It's a fun movie. I had, yeah. I, it's, my, it's number 10 for me. But And that chubby guy from Parks and Rec, like <laughs> somehow they turned him into an action star yeah. who was funny and charming and acted his butt off. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's that's almost like putting him in the Steve Rogers super serum thing and coming out as as uh, Peter Quill. Like, how did they turn this guy into an action star with abs and pecs and biceps? To be fair, he wasn't Moneyball <laughs> and Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but still, my God, to carry a, a yeah, but he, yeah, he, he did a frontliner. He, yeah. yeah, he did. He did. He wasn't the star. No, no, he wasn't. Was, and you know, to be yeah, 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 to be the headliner for that thing, that was. I enjoyed how much in, how invested Bradley Cooper was because you could feel yeah. the emotion in that. Yeah, yeah, that was a great voice performance. Sure. I, th- I think that showed uh, James Gunn as he wrote that too, wrote and directed that. That dude, he knows how to make a great movie. Like maybe not to the same level as like John Favreau, but up there in terms of yeah. like fun action adventure movies yeah. now didn't a michigander create guardians of the galaxies in the comic book world i don't know anything you guys might have to pull out your phones again i i want to say Storenko, but i'm not sure but there was a marvel comic creator from michigan who created guardians of the galaxy and like i said you know i don't want to say that it was bottom of the barrel but man they they pulled out dusted off these obscure characters that i had never never heard of mark would know yeah. or anyone that's <laughs> saying mark dudley of Magic's workshop is yeah, like the yeah. encyclopedia of comics. So, Andrew, if you could figure out who that is. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to throw out some honorable mentions that could have easily have cracked my top ten, may have been on my top ten at one time or another, but got bumped off for one reason uh, or another. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, 2017, yeah. directed by, uh, well, how do you pronounce it? Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. And that's, yeah. um, that, was, that, that was a great I did not like the first two Thors. I thought they. I kinda... thought the first one was okay. It was yeah. one of the okay. lighter Marvel movies, but this the second one, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ragnarok was awesome. Yeah. Ragnarok kind of introduced the fact that Marvel movies can not just be fun but funny. And and Jeff Goldblum, I don't even think he worked with a script. He just seemed to make up his dialogue as he went along, and he yeah, was, he was so good in it. He was Caligula, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and again, that was a monster hit, eight hundred sixty-five million on a hundred eighty million dollar budget. Uh, critics seem to like it more than the audience, ninety-three versus eighty-seven. But mm. uh, at one time, Thor Ragnarok was in my top ten, and it just got bun- bumped out. But I really, really enjoyed that movie. Uh, we talked about Civil War earlier. That at one time could have been in my top ten, uh, got bumped out. Another uh, monster hit. Yep. It. it Grossed one billion dollars on two hundred fifty million dollar budget, uh, beloved by critics and audiences. Ninety percent versus eighty nine percent. So those are my honorable mentions. Nick, anything uh, on your list that we overlooked that we didn't touch on? Throw me a, no, no, no. My my list. Uh, we we got them. A lot of them are a little bit out of order, and some sure, of them didn't yeah. make it on there. But uh, I, 
for movies that didn't make it, it's not because I I didn't like them because you can yeah. only get ten. So yeah. there are going to be some painful choices that are made. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy also introduced Josh Brolin to us as I wanted to see how he was going to do with Thanos. And yeah. I went, okay, wow, this guy. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm intrigued by it. And one of my favorite movie villains of all time, Thanos. I, I really, yeah. you know, when you think about his motive motivations, you know, it's like human beings kind of suck and the universe would be a better place if we got rid of half of them and i'm like uh, man well, I'm, he, I'm, i don't he know. apply that philosophy across the universe yeah exactly exactly you know, that is like so. everyone i want to do uh, that that his motivation i'm like okay that's fine they changed from the comic book that's fine the performance was great yeah and that's I, that's why i think infinity war was his movie yeah it was yeah we spent a lot yeah. of time with him if you actually look at screen time so i went okay uh, but yeah, no, uh, our, my top ten list we've covered it in one way or another, and uh, I like I said I've enjoyed them all. I am a little bit sad about what's happening with Phase Four and moving forward, but yeah, it is because there's no concrete plan, and and that's the thing we were talking about this before the podcast. I, my, the old A team line, I love it when a plan comes together, but I am yeah, terrified yeah. when a plan goes awry. Yeah. Before we get into the yeah. the negative aspect, Andrew, I want to give you one last chance yeah. to throw out any movies we didn't touch on. Right. And also, I looked up the creators of Guardians. It gives three names, and none of them are from Michigan. So, All right, I'm going to have to look yeah. that up. Uh, I don't have my phone. It's on I, a I charger. Think the, I think but... the creator of Thanos is from Michigan. I okay. Think the, one of the, the comic artists. I'll, I'll look that up. But Okay. All right, yeah, so there are just two movies that we didn't talk about. Um, the only Spider-Man movie is number 10 on my list. It's the animated Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, we didn't even touch on that. Yeah. And, I, and you know me, I'm not a huge fan of animated stuff, but... Seeing that in the theater, I'm like, this. There's something about this movie. It was a fun movie. The 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 different animation styles. Uh, John Mulaney as Spider Pig or Spider Ham, whatever. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. And then the only other one, my number six is the first Ant Man, which was very funny. I yeah, thought I, I I loved it. Let's get back to Spider Verse for a second. Yeah, I saw it in the theater. I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it as art. Yeah, I thought it was. A beautiful movie, beautifully animated. Really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, but the negatives and why it's not on my top ten is by the time it came out, I was starting to get burned out on the multiverse. And not only was Marvel doing multiverse, DC was doing multiverse. There was a movie called uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once was doing multiverse. Everybody was doing multiverse. And I'm, I was, by, by the time this movie came out, I was a little burnt out on multiverse. And I'm old school. I grew up with Peter Parker. Peter Parker is my Spider-Man. And a movie that puts forth the idea that, uh, okay, yeah, you're Spider-Man. We got a new Spider-Man. I kind of resented it. I rebelled against it. I love Peter Parker. Peter Parker's my Spider-Man, and I don't like the way Peter Parker was handled in that movie. So, so Into the Spider-Verse uh, appeals to, I think, a younger generation who are open to the idea of a, a new Peter Parker or a new, or, and that's not even his name, is Miles Morales, Miles right? Morales, yeah. Um, that's fine for a, a newer, uh, hipper audience, but for me, it'll always be Peter Parker, and I never saw the second one. I had no interest in seeing the second one. So yeah, I didn't see this. I'm with you on the fact that it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. It's it's a it's a work of art, um, but I had my issues with it. So I I enjoyed. It. I mean, the fact that they went dark in, the, in for what they did for Peter Parker, and then they brought the other Peter Parker in, and yeah, they kind of like toned him down, like he's this. Old middle aged, uh, kind of a little bit over the hill kind of thing, <laughs> and so that's why they. And there's also that trope thing that also comes in where, to bring another character in, they kind of have to like depower or kind of yeah, yeah. bring down the other character either by usually through comedic chops, like you yeah. add a little bit of humor, to, de self deprecating humor to bring them down to elevate another character, and you don't need to do that. No, uh, you could yeah. actually you could have had Miles Morales learning from Peter Parker. Oh, a team up, a that mentor. That would have dialed it up a little, oh, a little more. I would yeah. much prefer And you could that. see Peter Parker struggle as the teacher. Like, dude, I'm not a teacher. I'm learning as I go along. So, yeah. you know, carve your own path. Like, I can give you the, on how to handle the power, but, you know, Miles, and I, that would show Miles kind of like forging his own path. And he still did to a certain extent, but it was almost like he kept clinging on to Peter yeah. as this crutch. Yeah. So, all right. 
Um, now, we touched uh, a moment ago on some of the worst Marvel movies uh, and the current phase of the Marvel Universe, which uh, we're, we're super saturated with not only these this glut of Marvel movies, but the TV projects and series. Yes. There's so much all at the same time that it's almost it's overwhelming, and it's it's watering down everything. I feel like they're not focusing on these movies to make them great, and they're just kind of cranking things out. So I found a list online that uh, listed the worst Marvel Marvel movies that include not only MCU but Sony and uh, Fox. Um, now this isn't in any necessary order, even though I guess you can say I'm going to start with the worst and work my way up. Now a lot of these movies that are considered the worst I never saw. I had no interest in seeing, and I can't do that to myself. I don't want to spend money to go see a movie that going into it, people are like, this is awful. This yeah. is terrible. So yeah. a lot of these I haven't seen. So I can't necessarily criticize them. I'm just going to say that this is the general consensus of the worst Marvel movies. Coming in rock bottom as the worst Marvel movie uh, in recent memory is Madam Webb. Um, never saw it. Do you guys ever see it? Is that... Is that, uh, is that part Dakota, of the MCU? I don't think Dakota, it Well, uh, it's, it's, it's technically Marvel, so... Yeah, it, it's, in I think so, it's, it's in Sony's expanded universe. Yeah, because I was looking at the list of MCU. It's not included on the official MCU list. Right? Because no, it, no, no, no. I, I didn't say that. Oh, this okay. is this is yeah, MCU, all, all Sony, and Fox. I'm sorry. So right. this is all of them combined. It's just a Marvel gonna... movie being produced by Sony. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. No, Another... Ma- I have not seen Madam Web. Uh, I will probably watch it if it comes out on t- on streaming. I have no interest. Because no I, I I didn't want to pay money to go see that. Yeah. I can't imagine casting that and saying, okay, let's get a riveting, dynamic actress to play the lead. Is Dakota Johnson available? And it was she rough. When she, not, did, when she had to do the press things, she, yeah, she not could not either. sell that. Yeah, yeah. Another movie I haven't seen, uh, widely regarded as one of the worst Marvel movies of all time, Fantastic Four, but not the original two, which I actually kind of enjoyed. I'm talking the 2015 version yeah. with uh, Michael B. Jordan, and uh, Kate Miles Mara. Teller, what Miles I think Teller. I, was, I was just reading about that. It's got a nine percent on run. Nine percent. Yeah, even when it came out, before people started trashing, I'm like, I don't want to see this at all. There's nothing yeah. redeeming about this. I, I stayed away from it. It's it's amazing that, and that's also part of why Deadpool gave the middle finger to Fox. Was <laughs> how do you? They keep messing that up. Yeah, they can never get that thing that story right, and I don't know why. I'm excited about the fact that yes. Fantastic Four might get their redemption in the near future. They've they've been posting these cast photos. Who doesn't love uh, Pedro Pascal as uh, Mr. Yes. Fantastic? Yep. Uh, so I'm excited of what may come from this. Uh, I I will I will wait because now I've been you know when you burn your hand on the oven too many times <laughs> you know just because the oven has a nice little pretty cover on it I'm not gonna. I'll let you know. Uh, another list. Now, this isn't necessarily a complete list. These are just movies that sort of jumped out at me. I, I have not seen this one because of the bad reviews. Morbius, uh, 2022. No. Nothing. Um, now, I, me, apparently I'm not in the minority on this because a lot of people seem to agree with me, but ranked as one of the worst Marvel movies is Venom. And I have I've had no interest in seeing Venom or its sequel. Um, I... Don't like the idea of villain origin stories. I've not seen the Joker because I am opposed to villain origin it's, stories. It's dark. I know, <laughs> and, but I, I feel that a good villain is at its best when it's going toe to toe with a hero. So, you know, if they would have done a Venom movie that had Spider-Man in it, I would have been sitting there munching on popcorn, but I just did not have any interest in a Venom movie. The trailers looked silly and stupid to me. And apparently... People agree with me because it's ranked pretty low on the list of greatest Marvel movies. Any thoughts on Venom? I I like Tom Hardy's performance. I just uh, I'm I don't I'm not educated enough to know is he actually a villain or is he because he just doesn't like Spider Man? I because don't know. I don't remember Venom going like I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to eat random people. Like he well, he has like this weird moral code where. Because even Eddie Brock, the guy who was... Yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, Venom was created by Todd McFarlane, I believe. And uh, it was a, a symbiote from space or whatever that initially merged with Peter Parker, but then became a separate character in its own. And, and yes, you could describe him as a villain in the Marvel comics. Um, but like I said, I would, you know, Spider-Man 3 really botched the opportunity to pair Venom right. and Spider-Man on screen, but... 
for for Sony to say, hey, I got an idea. Let's just do a standalone Venom movie. I was like, screw that. I don't want to see Venom by himself. So I'm I'm not a not a fan of that sort of thing. I, I made the mistake of seeing that in theaters and everything about that movie, like on a technical level, it 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 looked like it was made in like two thousand three. Yeah. And it was silly and stupid and yeah. oh. And this is also yeah. one of those things Sony did it maybe to keep the rights for these exactly. characters because they have to turn out a movie or yeah. they're going to that, lose that, them. That can be the only reason I would think they... Now, they've done two, and prior yeah. to prior to Deadpool and Wolverine, they showed a trailer for the third one, and I just kind of rolled my eyes. like It looks yeah. like more of the same. Even though there, at the end of No Way Home, there was a, wasn't there a, a post-credits uh, scene where they might suggest that Spider-Man might be involved in this third one, but... Uh, they're, if if he is, they're keeping it close to the vest. But I, I have no interest in it unless they say, no, 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 no. You're going to go want to see the Spider-Man. But uh, Tom Hardy's Venom did make an appearance in the MCU. Right. In a post credit scene. Right. And so I think this is when people thought, oh, it's finally happening. And I think then Sony said, no, we're not going to do it. So we don't want to We'll play see that. how it plays out. But I, I have yeah. no interest in that. Now, here's the first movie I did see in the theater that I really didn't care much for. And... Uh, Deadpool and uh, Wolverine sort of poke fun at this uh, Daredevil 2003 hmm. starring Ben Affleck. Um, poorly cast. I, I Why they went with Ben Affleck to play Daredevil, I don't know. Uh, but I did not care for that movie at all. Yeah, I, I never saw it. Yeah. It didn't look, even when I was 17 or 18 when that came out, I'm like, eh, doesn't look good. Same with Elektra. I, I thought Ben Affleck was doing an okay job, but I... I, I was willing to give him a chance. It's just, the story was just bad. Yeah. The story was just awful. Yeah. Um, one of the more recent movies to make this list. Uh, like I said, I've liked pretty much all of the X-Men and Wolverine movies, but I never even bothered to go to the theater to see Dark Phoenix. Heard it yeah. got atrocious reviews. Never 2019. Saw never saw it. Um, no interest in that one at all. I, I'm not even curious to see it, even, despite the fact I've seen all the other X-Men movies. I just have no interest in it at all. I haven't. I didn't see that one or Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah Apocalypse yeah. was such a. Oh, that was a drag. <laughs> now, last year's movie that I went to go see that's on this list, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. And that is Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Yeah. Now I've said that I hate the multiverse. Technically, this isn't a, a multiverse movie. This is them shrinking down to microscopic size and discovering a universe. Of weird characters and creatures, and I'm I'm like, what the hell am I watching here? I hated it. I, I almost walked out last week. I, I hadn't seen it, but last week when or was it the week before when we talked about doing an MCU list, I'm like, there are there are five movies in the MCU that I haven't seen. This one looked the most palatable, so I put it on for the first half hour. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no, this is yeah, yeah, yeah no good. Now we're, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, we're back to movies that I have not seen, even though I'm kind of intrigued by this one because I've seen people online say it's not as bad as people say. Have you guys seen The Marvels 2023? No. Nope. No. I didn't care for the TV shows. I didn't care for Ms. Marvel, the TV series. Uh, some of the other Marvel characters in there I was, like, indifferent about. Some people say, oh, no, go see it. It's a lot of fun. I, I have zero interest in yeah. seeing this movie, and I'm not – being sexist, no. I know it's like you know female Marvel characters joining forces, but I have zero interest. But I I may give it a shot because I don't want to criticize it having not seen it. So I may give it a shot, but boy, I have no interest. I in I have it. that feeling about Captain Marvel. I didn't like the story, and yeah, because what no. what Captain Marvel did was it tried to shoehorn something in because it when Captain Marvel for me was what started uh, helped further unravel the whole Marvel MCU yeah. because it, Samuel Jackson, as Nick Fury says, you know, why did you start weaponizing the Tesseract? Cause him, and he points to Thor. Once we realize we're not alone, I'm like, well, you, in 1990, you were having <laughs> with an alien and a bunch of green skin shape changers. Yeah. And you ended up marrying one spoiler. Uh -huh. I haven't seen that one, you know, so uh, that yeah. when they put all that stuff and I said, well, then what am I watching here? You just kind of went back and undid a lot of stuff yeah. that you can't explain. And that was, a, that was another flaw in Endgame is they made Captain Marvel so powerful 
that in Endgame, they were like, well, where were you for the last movie? And she's like, well, there's other people in the universe. I had to go help them. And that was sort of a cop-out because she's so damn powerful, almost too powerful. And so then they bring her back for the last one to kind of tidy things up. But I I thought that was sort of a And my thing is, so had he never pushed the pager, would you not have realized when people around you started blinking out that something major had happened? (laughs) Because it didn't just blink out on Earth. They blinked out probably wherever she was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's exactly what her excuse was, is she was addressing things in other parts of the universe. Yeah. But that was just a story excuse to hold off on bringing her into this. And if you're that powerful that you can destroy his mothership, Right. And fly up like there. flew right through it. Yeah, yeah. as if nothing. And then you're struggling to take the gauntlet from him. That part was... Yeah. Now, this next movie, imagine being a single guy, sitting on your couch, bored. One, two, three? Uh, what's that? One, two, three, single guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, single and... Uh, but yeah. I'm rarely bored. So imagine if you... <laughs> so I'm sitting on the couch, bored, looking for something to watch. I'm going to check out this movie called eternals in 2021 oh boy i got about i don't even know if i got 30 minutes into it it might have been closer to 20 minutes with having nothing else to watch and nothing else to do i turned it off i couldn't deal with it i thought it was god awful just awful what are your thoughts on eternals uh, you know when the mafia puts two in the back of your head? <laughs> so the movie version was the Eternals. The TV version was the, uh, what were they called? The, um, uh, like the Immortals or something like uh, that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. They, that's That was the movie version I got. So I, I got I got, I got got blasted in the head from the TV stuff. I got blasted in the head mm-hmm. and the Family Jewels with yeah. the Eternals, which I didn't make any sense. And I said, okay, so there's this thing that's just sticking out of the ocean. No yeah. one's going to address that. Yeah. Hated it. Hated yeah. it. Wasn't going to, definitely wasn't going to see it. Um, yeah. are, are, are we going to talk about, do you have another one on the list? Uh, just a couple more. Let me go okay. through them real yeah, quick. Yeah. We already touched on Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. I hated both of those. Hmm. Uh, saw the first Hulk movie in 2003. Sitting next to my like six-year-old nephew, after it was over, I turned to him. I said, what did you think? And my six-year-old nephew turned to me and said, that was awful. Yeah. Wow. My six-year-old. And so I'm like, I agree with you. I yeah. hated 2003 Hulk movie. Never really sat down and watched a 2008 movie. But uh, it was, most people It was agree. only a tiny bit better. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Edward Norton so. actually did a good job. They That fight in the end, if you want to watch anything, watch that fight between Hulk and Abomination. Yeah. Um, and again, I keep bringing up the multiverse. Uh, for that reason, I absolutely hated Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I thought it was a convoluted mess yeah. with these animated yeah. realities and all these crazy realities and i stuff. saw that in the theater yes. and it was hated it it was it was messy yeah, yeah. They, and they made it come across as a horror movie and it wasn't yeah it's, oh you're saying I, it's I, horror just because sam raimi directed it come on you right. know yeah. but I, the trailer that's where when the trailer lies to you, when yeah. you did, <laughs> i was already upset but now i'm now i'm furious <laughs> yeah <laughs> and finally i didn't so much hate this movie as uh, it was just disappointing to me and really they were facing a, a huge challenge here Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, 2022. You know, it started out with a gut punch of, of Black Panther's funeral. And so I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be, I'm going to be a blubbering idiot. And then after that an introduction of the funeral, it just spiraled out of control and became a mess of a movie. And I'm like, okay, this is not worthy of not only the first Black Panther, but, um, you know, when, when the Black Panther characters were in, introduced in, Endgame and stuff like yeah. that, Infinity War. Uh, this movie is largely forgettable. I mean, if you were to bring it up, I'd be like, wait, what now? Oh, yeah, there was a sequel. Yeah. The sequel's just completely forgettable. I never saw it, yeah. yeah. You, you it know, did, it you didn't know, look great. You you know you'll get in trouble and say, well, this didn't make sense. It's a comic book movie, so why are you worried about reality and stuff? But to be fair, Wakanda is basically, from the geographical point of which they established in their own MCU, so it's not like, me. Hey, you forgot the map. It's basically if it was in Nebraska and Kansas. Mm-hmm. How are you fighting an ocean? <laughs> like someone who belongs in the ocean, like Submariner. Like when they when they were oh. fighting, I said, "Wait, you belong in the ocean. How are you fighting Wakanda? Like where's the ocean in Wakanda?" Yeah, because yeah, it's a landlocked. Yeah, it's a landlocked African place. Country, there, yeah. may, there might be a big lake somewhere. That doesn't count <laughs> as the ocean, my friend. I live. We live in yeah. the Great Lakes. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge flaw. Where they're like heading out to the ocean. Like, where are you going? Oh, we're gonna. We're going to go beat these people on their turf. Yeah. You're going on their turf where they have the advantage. 
and they get their ass kicked. That's and it's like, like old Hammer films. Like, well, we must go fight Dracula. It's, it's night, a- dude. We're not going. Like, I wish there was just one American. Like, you Yanks don't want to fight. No, yeah, we're yeah. not coming. We're you, not coming to suicide, Bartholomew. You go into the castle, and there's that mist and yeah. stuff, and you're like, uh, let's wait till daytime. Penelope, yeah. you and your well endowed sisters, go and find <laughs> Dracula. All right, so that's the list I compiled of uh, doing some online research of the oh, worst Marvel movies. You, you didn't want to talk about Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? I didn't. I'm joking. Oh, I was going to say I didn't. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I I, I, I saw it. it. I thought it was okay. No desire to see it again. Uh, the characters were likable. The story was okay. It just, Someone you can and they all can't make the top ten. <laughs> that, no, that's why right. I I have nothing against the movie. I enjoyed. I enjoyed yeah. watching, but I'm not. It can't sound the top ten. Yeah. Uh, any other worse Marvel movies come to mind? And, I mean, there's that that old Fantastic Four movie with <laughs> with uh, the really bad uh, Mister Fantastic effects and all that stuff. But uh, my Mount, I mean, my Mount Rushmore of awful would be Spider Man Three, uh, Fantastic yeah. Four movie, Morbius. Uh, gosh, uh, I didn't like the third X Men movie. Yeah, it was third. X Men. It was a three. little cluttered. I didn't like yeah. it as a first. I didn't first hate gen. Kelsey Grammer as the Beast. I thought he kind of captured the es- essence yeah. of the Beast. But yeah, you're right. It was a little cluttered. I, that, that number four, I have several uh, options on there, but I just you know I'll just give it to X X three. Let me ask you guys this: What is your preference when it comes to the Thing uh, in Fantastic Four? I thought it was kind of a bold choice in the uh, in the was it the Fox uh, Fantastic Four movie where they had an actor in a basically rubber suit playing the thing versus a CGI thing. Do you have a preference one way or the other? Because I know it's... I'll it's always so... differ. I'll, look, I'm not the one in the suit. I'm not the one that has to get up and do hours of makeup, but I always prefer, when when possible, do do practical. Yeah. When possible, I, do practical. That's kind of my feeling just... with the Fantastic Four movies is I sort of a, applauded their decision to go with a practical effect. Did it Did it pay off? It's kind of hit and miss. But. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, when he did uh, Smog, the dragon, wore the gray suit, put mm-hmm. all the little dots on his face, had the camera right under there, and yeah. then physically crawled like a dragon. Yeah. That was an unseen. They had to give him honey and lemon and tea for his voice. Oh, so yeah. he put the work in. He was yeah. drenched in sweat. Yeah. And so that performance translated. Even if yeah. you use computers, it translates well. And I you thought know, Michael Chiklis did a great job. I mean, there were some yeah. genuine emotion of him becoming this you know hideous thing i thought he did a great job with what he had to work with now jessica elba who's beautiful was sorely miscast yeah, yeah. as uh sue storm sue storm is sort of your blonde girl next door and they're like well we'll get jessica elba and dye her hair blonde that's and, a uh, fox producer yeah going who's the hottest girl right now yeah. who's the hottest <laughs> woman right now i don't care if she fits for the role and then put some blue eyes on her and put her yeah. in there. I was like, really? Just <laughs> Alba? Oh, Andrew, right. practical effects or uh, CGI? Always practical. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, honestly, I saw the, the the first two Fantastic Fours. I blocked them out of my memory. I did yeah. not like them at all. They introduced Silver Surfer in the, the second, uh, the second they, one. And yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hate them. But I didn't hate. I didn't hate Silver Surfer. I hated yeah. Galactus. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, when I don't even was, remember yeah, that. Because if you bring all. a Silver Surfer, I know he's the herald of something awful. And yeah, then yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I can't wait to see the. Oh, no. Yeah. Andrew, uh, as we wrap up, any final uh, hate, hated Marvel movies? Uh, I, we talked about uh, just for a second uh, Thor 2. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one. Yeah. Watched it one time with my ex, and I was like, yeah, no, we wasted two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Thor actually has is the roughest one in there, because Thor, the first movie, you had to introduce him. Thor 2 yeah. did not do well. Yeah, Thor With Ragnarok, they do a complete 180. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. When they started pushing the comedy aspect, I'm like, you guys got to deal this back. Don't turn him into a joke. And then yeah. came got Thor, you know, Love and Thunder, and I went, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, they went too much with the fourth Jumped one. the shark. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's let's just wrap up by talking about the future of, of Marvel movies. Um, I, for one, I, I kind of feel like Thanos, where I feel like let's just wipe the slate clean, reboot the entire universe, and start from scratch because I think it has evolved into a convoluted mess with the multiple timelines and multiverses, and they're relying so heavily on that. I want to see Marvel movies get back to simple standalone stories like i want to see spider-man exist in new york city and a 
a bank alarm is triggered triggered and he has to go uh you know take care of the robbers at the bank who might be rhino or one of these uh, classic i i want to see simple stories of good versus evil once they started getting into the multiverses where anything was possible right. and, and I, i'm like enough and, I, i'm an, I, i'm done with this and and also with a lot of those movies especially the second half of the mcu um not every movie has to be like the whole universe has at stake. Yeah, how many and, times? And follow the same stinking formula. And mm-hmm. it's like, come on, guys. So I'm, I, I'm I, ready for a reboot. Yeah, I, 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 I really like the am. more, like, eh. the, the less CGI, the better. Like, the, the, the raw mm-hmm. practical effects and the whole universe doesn't have to be at stake. Just have a, a good, solid story. There was a part of Loki that, that kicked off the whole anger for me when they – they just basically said, you see these infinity stones? They mean nothing. They're right, big. exactly. So you there just, was a drawer full of them. It, so yeah. 18 movies worth of stuff just <laughs> off the window. It doesn't mean anything. All that, all those consequences, nothing, because we can just jump to every timeline whenever you want. I'm like, then wh- where were you guys? Yeah. Did and then, yeah, Endgame, it was, Endgame was the beginning of the end for me. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if this is going to happen, but Disney might need to do to Kevin Feige what DC did uh what they brought in James Gunn and the, what's the other guy Peter Serafin mm-hmm. to to head up the DC movies. They might have to bring in some new blood. I don't, know, I don't know if Iger has it in him to do that. No, it, no, he for, don't. They, they, he would have to go out and bring in a new CEO. He did. He he left and then he came back I, because right, of right. all this. They had it with the snap. They had everything that they needed to do to bring in Fantastic Four, X Men, and mutants. And yeah. you could and no one would have faulted them. No, he no. can't say like, oh, this is how can you do that. It, where were you doing, you know, the the Avengers and all that kinds of? Where were you for the history? Where were you when Cap was going through World War Two? Yeah, only Strange would have remembered it. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't. So we're just about out of time, man. We went the full two hours on this. Wow. <laughs> I, I just want to say this is to sort of a cliffhanger, maybe a post credit scene. Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom was revealed at San Diego Comic Con. I I thought that was a joke. I'm intrigued to see how they yeah. plan on pulling this off. Is it? Is he just never going to reveal Robert Downey Jr.'s face? I, I don't know. But we I, can't get into all that. I prayed it was a joke. It's, it's not a joke. When I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. But it's, my, it's nightmares just continuing. Uh, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll follow up our Marvel uh, opinions uh, as the next phase rolls out. I'm not real optimistic about but. On that note, guys, uh, man, solid, solid podcast. Oh, yes. Yep. And uh, we will see you again soon on a future episode. Good of night, everybody. Hollywood Blockbuster. Excelsior. Come to the movies. Watch Charlie Chaplin. And put some sunshine into your day. Forget the hard times, come to the movies, and try to laugh your troubles away.